although we played a shaky first half defensively, we were really good. And then the second half offensively, we picked it up. Oscar got it going, and just a really good win to start off the uh, WAC season. Yeah, you mentioned the defense. That's been the MO. I mean, the uh, three-point defense, the second overall in the nation. Three-point defense, so our overall defense True. has been been terrific. Uh, we you know are right up there in the stats in the nation of all the defensive things, and uh, it's been good for us because our offense still hasn't started to click, but uh, we've been able to stay in games and win games because of our defense, and uh, all five guys that are on the floor have bought into it. You mentioned Oscar Freyer's name in the last four games, averaging about 13 points per game. Yeah, Oscar uh, has been really good. The last uh, three three weeks of practice, he's really got into it. He's worked on his jump shot. Uh, but just really got into it athletically as far as crashing the boards. Uh, defensively, he was good just being active. And then he got that jump shot going. So when he crashes the board to get those chips in and, get, and gets his, uh, you know, his mojo going, that, that jump shot seems to fall. So we're going to have to have another big game out of Oscar. Also, another player, Shaq Carr, has been, uh, been on the court for an extended amount of time at the last three games, averaging about 26 minutes on the hardwood and averaging about nine points per game. Yeah, Shaq has, has been really good, and uh, he's had to. Casey's a little banged up, has been banged up, but Shaq has come in and has used his quickness, his ability to get to the basket. He's finishing better. He's finding guys uh, uh, in the lane, uh, taking care of the basketball, which is always a big thing for Shaq. When he plays out there and he's a little, uh, you know, just a little cautious or or just a little cool in terms of turning the ball. So when he's on fire, he does a really good job defensively. He's turned it up. So, again, he's going to play a lot uh, this game probably, and he'll be in there with Casey. And in case he comes out, he'll have to take uh, take care of the basketball. You mentioned the second half with Alessandro Labor. He's been down in that post position for you. Uh, he's a guy that I've heard on a number of occasions. You, you seem to be liking how he's progressing. Yeah, I was proud of Ali. Yeah. You know, that first half uh, in Seattle got in real quick foul trouble, so he couldn't do anything. And then came out in the second half and uh, hit a three, was good in the post, uh, very active. So he continues to get better. Uh, he's going to have to do a good job again tonight to stay out of foul trouble, to really box out, to be tough down there. Uh, and then when the opportunity exists, not only score in the post, but spread it out and uh, maybe hit some threes. You mentioned Casey Benson's name kind of banged up a little bit. It was a knee, shoulder, status overall for... Casey? Uh, we'll see. You know, he didn't practice for two days. He practiced yesterday, but you know, I, I slowed down that hit he took in Seattle. And it was a it was a vicious hit. Uh, so we're we're glad that he's able to play, and it wasn't something real serious. So we'll just have to see how he does and see how he takes the the bangs and the bruises because he's going to have to play physical tonight. He's going to have to be down there and help him rebounding and uh, you know playing well. So we'll just see how it goes. New Mexico State comes in 13-3 uh, and three overall. Big win against Miami. They've knocked off Illinois at the uh, United Center in Chicago. What are you expecting from the Aggies? Just another highly contested game. I mean, the last two years we beat them here, and they've been great games. Uh, this is our our rival in, in, in the WAC, and uh, we want to win the WAC, and you have to go through New Mexico State. And they're really good this year. Uh, defensively, they cause a lot of turnovers. they got great pressure. Uh, they're not a great uh, sh uh, shooting team, but what they do do is they crash the boards. Uh, Jones, Chua, mm -hmm. uh, Wilkins, McCants, all those guys are bigs, really can rebound. So we have to do a good job of, A, taking care of the basketball, and then when they take a shot, uh, we're going to have to do a really good job of limiting uh, first and second shots. And then we got to make sure that Lofton uh, doesn't go off. Lofton can really play. Uh, he's a guy that can really get hot and kind of take over game. Uh, you know, I watched the Illinois game two or three times, and he's, he's a big reason why they won that game because he just really caught fire and they couldn't do anything with him. Yeah, Zach Lofton, a graduate transfer from Texas Southern, averaging about 19 points per game. If he goes off, you're, it's going to be a long night. You've got to contain be. him. Yep, and, you know, we've had other guys go off. Uh, you know, the Seattle kid went off and we were able sure. to shut other guys down. So, you know, we can sustain uh, one guy going off. We can't let all of them uh, get it going. And as I said, I think the biggest thing for us is, A, the turnovers, and, B, uh, is not just getting uh, killed on the board. So they're really relentless on the offensive rebounding side. So, you know, defensively, we're really good, but you can't uh, – you got to finish uh, the possession with the rebound. Jamaria Jones, a double-double you mentioned on the boards, and you can't say it enough. Uh, both both ends of the glass, you're going to have to be tough underneath the Yeah, glass. and then you see Chua. I mean, Chua comes off the bench, uh, comes in. He is a handful in the post. Uh, Jones is just one of those guys. He's six foot five, 180 pounds, but just a real quick jumper, very active. You don't put a, a, a body on him, he's going to get the rebound, and he just likes to outwork people. So we really have to do a good job of all five guys just rebounding. That means uh, Casey, Shaq. Uh, Josh, Oscar, everybody's got to come back and get rebounds, and our bigs have to keep those guys off the boards. You mentioned some of the keys, and those are some of them. Are there any other intangibles? Obviously, you kind of laugh and say, hey, we got to make some Well, shots. I think Keontae's got to be a guy that's got to stay on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's had problems uh, in physical games of sometimes picking up a couple cheap fouls. Mm -hmm. uh, we know Keontae's going to get some fouls because of the way he plays, but he can't 
pick up the cheap ones. And if he goes off uh, off the floor early because of foul trouble, we could have some problems. All right, good luck tonight. All right, thanks. Head coach Dan Marley of your GC Lopes taking on the New Mexico State Aggies. Stay with us. More of the Lopes pregame show continues from GC Arena. But first, August Touchard could have given up the game of basketball when she blew out her knee at the start of the 2015-16 season. Touchard's love of the game brought her back to the court, and now she's back to her old self for GCU's women's team. We'll tell you all about her remarkable comeback of August Touchard when we come back. My name is Anthony Perez, and I earned my master's in education at Grand Canyon University. I feel that the degree program at GCU definitely got me ready and prepared me to be an agent of change so that way I can lead my classroom to find innovative ways of solving the problems in education in the state of Arizona. Grand Canyon University definitely has a vibrant campus that has many resources that are accessible. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. I'm Mary, I am a sophomore at GCU, and I'm studying biomedical engineering. GCU is definitely preparing me for the next chapter in my life. Biomedical engineering is not easy. We are able to interact with the doctors and provide the tools they need to be successful. I want to be able to start my own company and create the crazy technologies that the doctors are using, and that way when I see them, like, that's my product right there. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show here on Your View, Cox Channel 4. And we want to remind you, you can be a part of our broadcast tonight and really all season long by finding us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag Lopes Rising. Give us your thoughts on GCU basketball. And if you're watching from out of state or when the team hits the road, we want to hear from you. And uh, you can follow us right here. And if you see, tweets are rolling on the bottom of the screen right now, and that tweet could be yours. So grab your white at home. Get in the spirit of the white out here at GCU Arena and get in the spirit of our broadcast. We look forward to hearing from you with that hashtag, Looks Rising. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for being back here. It is a full house here at GCU Arena, and everyone is anticipating the tip-off of this whack home opener for the Lopes against the Aggies. But first, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about women's basketball. She could have sailed off into the sunset after the season opener against Hawaii back in 2015 when she suffered a devastating knee injury. But that's not the type of athlete nor person that August Tashard is. Instead, the senior point guard battled back and our Barry Butel profiles the road she took to get back to playing the game that she loves. Six points, man. It's now under 10 to go. Touchard for three. Big bucket for August Touchard of the Lopes. For Desiree Smith. Pushing the tempo are the Lopes. Nice pass from Touchard. That first game against Hawaii my junior year uh, for my ACL is definitely a devastating game and time for me. I've never had a major injury and that was my first one so I wasn't exactly sure how to handle it. Luckily my family was there at that game so uh, you know they came back right when it happened and they took me home and I got surgery that week. I came back right when season started last, last year. Coming off a knee injury like that it's hard to be thrown into full play. So I definitely had to adjust very quickly and I couldn't necessarily get back to my self just playing in games. I needed a little bit more time to develop, which is what I got this summer. For the past four months before season started, all throughout summer and spring, I was able to get stronger. I was able to develop my game a little bit better, get my shot to where I wanted it to be. And I definitely had to take that time to get back to where I wanted to be because last season, I wasn't able to do that just uh, coming off a knee injury like that and then coming back and playing games right off the back. It was definitely a setback. Obviously, it's an injury that no athlete wants to endure, but it also made me stronger mentally and physically. I came back stronger, and it's also been a blessing in disguise because it's given me this fifth year and with Coach Powell and with this new team that I love playing with, and I think we can do something really special this year. Too short, open look for three. Bam! Coach Blue's definitely taking me under her wing. Being a former point guard, she's definitely been able to give me a lot of advice, help me see different things on the court that I necessarily wasn't seeing before. She's helped me develop my shot a lot better and just attacking the rim and having an attacking mindset is the main thing that she's been teaching me. 
it feels great being back to myself. I feel great physically and mentally. You know, playing 40 minutes a game, it's a challenge, but it's something that I, I want to do. I think the coaches trust me because they obviously wouldn't have me on the floor for that long. I've been taught to be an extension of Coach Powell, and that's a role that I'm really trying to embrace. She's a very high energy and positive coach. Being the coach on the court, being the leader on the court, we obviously have a lot new pieces, and I have to be the glue to keep all those pieces together. Basketball is a game of runs, so it's gonna go up and down, and it's important that even if we're down, I still gotta be a leader on the court. I gotta be positive, I gotta bring my teammates together and make sure we're doing what we need to do on the court. And Tushard is currently second in the WAC in three points made and fourth in assists while averaging over 10 points per game. And right now, the Lopes are at New Mexico State in a close one right now as they're looking for their sixth straight win. All right, and here inside GCU Arena, the Havocs, they are ready for tip-off against the Aggies. It is the WAC home opener for the Lopes. A lot of famous folks in the house tonight, and of course, the one where it all began for sports here in the Valley. Jerry Colangelo looking on, watching his good friend Dan Marley as he gets the guys ready for tonight's game. And we'll get you ready for tonight's game with the Lopes Insider, Paul Poro, back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere, Flores Corner is right around the corner. Earning your RN to BSN degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. Finding your purpose takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience delivering our accredited RN to BSN program 100% online. Graduate in as few as 16 months learning from full-time practicing nurse faculty in small classes. Integrate your education with your faith and Christian worldview. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. as we count you down to tip off here on the Lopes pregame show on your view Cox channel four and I am Kate Longworth and I am joined now by the Lopes insider Paul Coro and uh, it's always exciting here at GCU Arena you always feel the energy but are you feeling like it's a little bit different tonight with the Aggies in the house and this rivalry being established between these two teams yeah there's so many layers I don't think it's just that I mean of course the rivalry is a huge game and it's so much more in the line but Yes, it does. And uh, we know the Havocs are happy to be back after the holidays, and I'm sure the Lopes players happy to be back in the house after that road trip. They took the road to the road on December 22nd. Some highs, some lows. You were with the team all the way. What did you see over these past couple weeks? Yeah, a lot of growth because we had a sense of time shut out Seattle down the crunch time of that game. So maybe they weren't being flashy in that game, but they got things done at Seattle University. But Illinois, there were some flashes of greatness, especially when it came to Oscar Freyer. What did you see in his dunk that has now gone viral? I'm 
amazing. It was, uh, you know, Illinois won that game and had a sold out crowd, and this was the play that their fans reacted to the most. Uh, Oscar Freyer, the rim slayer here. <laughs> he, uh, he's a, he was, had his waist above that guy's shoulders, and he's 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> Uh, even the Illinois coach was just like said, holy cow, after that one. It was uh, an amazing play and a key play at the time. Uh, they were in that, like I said, they had a really good chance. And Oscar's just been playing better and better of late. Uh, he had 14 points in that second half at Seattle. Hit some key jump shots. He really helps him on the boards a lot. And he has so much defensive potential with that frame. Uh, he'll be key tonight. A lot of guys have to crash the boards tonight because this is such a good rebounding team. Right, and we know Dan Marley, of course, has his team poised and ready for this to go out there, have the habits on their side, but to focus on the action on the court as well. And talking about teams that have really turned things around, let's talk about Nicole Powell and what she has done with this women's basketball program these past couple weeks. Tonight, they're in action. It's a close one right now New Mexico State, and they're going for their sixth straight win, hoping that that'll happen tonight. Yeah, they've done a great job to turn things around. You know, they've been up and down. They had some great early games, you know, battling Duke for a half. They had Rice beat, you know, kind of similar thing of what the men's team has gone through. But to win five in a row, their opening game at Seattle, which is a good whack team on the road. And it's not just Bree Mobley. Early on, they leaned so much on Bree Mobley, but now they're getting more supplementary players. August Tushar has been solid all year as that feature, that feature mentioned. But Jessica Juski has been a consistent scorer. And now they're getting some of those freshmen to contribute more. And so it, it gives Nicole Powell a lot more options. And that game right now at halftime, it's a one-point game, so we'll be updating you throughout the game. And we are counting you down to tip off for this game. The men's Division I basketball team has it all on the line now. Whack play, it counts this year. And the Lopes are going up against the Aggies. We'll have the action coming up, but still more Lopes pregame coming your way. Sit back on the couch. We're going to take you around the whack right after this. Thank you so much, Paul Cora, for being with us. And folks at home, stay with us. We'll be right back. The Grand Canyon University Championship Golf Course features over 7,200 yards of tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, and a 22,000 square foot clubhouse. The Lope House Restaurant, serving modern American cuisine, is open to the public seven days a week. Come experience the best golf and dining destination in the heart of Phoenix. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go low. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Welcome back. It's the Lopes pregame show, and this is what's happening around the conference right now. Grand Canyon women's basketball in action at New Mexico State. One point lead, a one point game at the break. Lopes trailing 30 to 31, but Jessica Juski leading the way with 13 points. Meanwhile, also in action tonight at 7 p.m. tip off, Kansas City at Utah Valley, and UTRGV is up at Bakersfield, and Chicago State is at Seattle University. Those were the opponents that both the, Ag both the Aggies and GCU opened their WAP play against. The Aggies got the win over Chicago State. The Lopes got the win over Seattle University. And now GCU is home for the WAC home opener against the Aggies. Who will prevail tonight? Well, only time will tell. It is under the bright lights here at GCU Arena that we are bringing you all the action on your view. Cox Channel 4 coming up right after this. We've got all the action. It's a whiteout. And Barry and Scott will be calling it all from the first tip off right after this. Companies, Comfortpedic Inc. We're a local mattress company here. It's a small family business that my dad started. Now we are providing the dorm mattresses to the most recent dorms here at GCU. 
One of my professors, he was a professor from my junior year, Paul Waterman, he was the one that started everything. Without him, like, this wouldn't have been possible. I came up with a short presentation, a very a quick business pitch. I present to Dr. Gibb with my company history, and, and he loved it. So first we started with the hotel mattresses. Brett Courtwhite was very helpful, and um, everything ran smoothly. From there, we began with the door mattresses. We asked him what exactly they were looking for in a door mattress, and that's when we started to come up with a prototype. We brought in one of um, the mattresses that GCU currently has. We opened it up. We saw where they needed improvement and, and what we could do best to like maximize a better prototype, and we came up with the mattresses that we have now, and after that, everything ran pretty smoothly, thankfully. <laughs> you can see the community thriving along with GCU, and just the fact that GCU was willing to buy locally from a company that's only 10 minutes away, you can tell that they really want the community to grow with them. I'm very proud to say I'm a Lope, and I, and I tell it to everyone, like, go to GCU, Lope's up. I'm very, very proud. GCU Arena, where tonight, the Lopes play host to the New Mexico State Aggies. Welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Gary Vitel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, it doesn't get much better than this in regards to rivalries in the Western Athletic Conference. The 13-3 Aggies taking on the 11-5 Lopes. The Lopes coming off a very impressive road victory at Seattle. Well, they were great. They were fantastic on defense, especially in the second half. They really got out from behind the arc. Vince came in and did a fabulous job, and I really like the way they took the ball inside. 73-57, the final score on Alessandro Labor. 13 minutes at seven points and two boards. He'll have to stand tall tonight against this Aggie squad. Oscar Freyer has been a highlight reel on the road. How about Big O? Oh, I love the way he's been aggressive. One of the best moves of the season was Dan Marley putting him on the bench for a couple games, letting the kids settle down. There's a little bit of a sophomore slump, but he has come back and it's been electrifying. You don't put a body on any offensive glass. He will throw it down on the, the back of your neck. 13 points per game average the last four games for the rim slayer, Oscar Freire. As I mentioned, the Aggies coming in 13 and three overall, big wins against Miami, also against the Illini of the United Center. Zach Lofton, their graduate transfer averaging almost 19 points per game. I like Zach Lofton. He's capable of going for 25 or 30 points on any given night. There you see it, 13 games, double figure scoring, including the last eight for Zach Lofton. Look for him as well as some other players on the Aggies. But it's time to get this game started. It's time for the tip-off. Let's send it over to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Western Athletic Conference men's basketball matchup between the Aggies of New Mexico State University and the old Grand Canyon University and Lopes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Jake Bradshaw, a junior majoring in accounting and vice president of game day for the Havocs. Hey, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful night here at Grand Canyon University. I pray for a safe game, Lord. I pray for an entertaining game. And I, I always thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. You sent your son down to save us. Thank you for everything. Amen, Lord. Go Lopes. Thank you, Jake. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the singing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the award-winning 50 Voice Men's Honor Chorale from Brophy, Brophy College Preparatory School under the direction of Mr. Paul Olson.
Great job by Jake Bradshaw, the Havoc Vice President of Game Day, Junior majoring in accounting with our prayer and our national anthem from Brophy College Prep. New Mexico State Aggies 13 and 3 overall, 1 and 0 in the WAC after a 97-60 win at Chicago State on January 6th. Their head coach is Chris Jans in his first season at the helm. Here are his starting five. AJ Harris, City and Deer, Zach Lofton, Jamario Jones, and Jonathan Wilkins. Yeah, we're going to keep our eyes on number 10, Jamario Jones. He's not a real tall player, but he is savage. Let me just give you some of his ranks. 11th in the nation in rebounds, 10th in total rebounds, 10th in offensive rebounds, oh, and 9th in double doubles. He is the first player in the WAC conference in five years to post a triple-double. Jams, the former associate head coach at Wichita State and head coach at Bowling Green for two seasons. Associate head coach Lou Godino, David Anwar, and Jeff Myatt are the assistant coaches. The Aggies again, 13 and 3 overall, coming in to take on Grand Canyon University. This has developed into quite the rivalry between the Aggies and the Lopes. Time now to introduce you to GCU. Are you ready? senior Casey Benson. You heard of the one-armed man of the fugitive? Well, he's one arm, one leg right now, really banged up. But this is the last biggest non-postseason game of his college career. And he needs to pick it up on the offensive end. Folks need him to go between 12 and 15 points tonight, limit those turnovers, and get the team into their offense. 11 and 5, the Lopes 1 and 0 in the Western Athletic Conference. 73-56 win at Seattle. On January 6th, Dan Marley in his fifth season, the associate head coach is Todd Lee. The assistant coaches are Chris Cremelone and TJ Benson. Director of basketball operations is Luke Dallariva. The special assistant to the head coach is Brendan Sabian. And the graduate assistant is Johnny Hill. Lopes and the Aggies splitting their four games the last two seasons. The home team coming out on top each time. Another packed house, sold out, standing room only here at GCU Arena. Time now for Scott Williams, your three keys. Well, border battle, and I'm not talking about the Arizona-New Mexico border. I'm talking about win the rebound uh, battle. Got to get on the glass. They got some savage players. You talked about Jones. They can really get on the offensive board. Got to limit the one shot and done. Then they got to pass the rock. And I'm talking to uh, Benson, Carr, and Braun right now. Make the extra pass for one another to get clean looks at that basket and punch bowl. This is a rivalry game. I'm not talking about punching anybody in the mouth. I'm talking about being the aggressive team that makes something happen to keep this crowd, which is absolutely unglued, into this game. Feed off that energy. Ride it for 40 minutes. Let the chips fall where they may. This crowd's ready for opening tip. We'll see how the Lopes and Aggies respond. The officials are David Hall, Michael Irving, and Eric Anderson. Josh Bond, he looks hyped tonight. He's feeling this energy from this crowd. Said he's ready to go during the opening warm-up. Oscar Freire, Alessandro Labor. Called upon in the low post. Crowd, Lopes fans will remain on their feet till the Lopes hit their opening bucket. We are underway in Phoenix. The Lopes win the opening tip. 
Vernon hands it over to Casey Benson, moves to his left. Guarded there by A.J. Harris. Braun beyond the arc. Desired there by Endear. Up high, Vernon. Oh, he can't put it home. Uh, the pass was a little late getting to Vernon, so he couldn't quite keep it over the rim, try to throw it up from behind, beneath the rim. Just cut the underside. Lofton gave it over to Harris. Harris back beyond the up. Backing in, turning on Vernon, not there, and Jones misses. Nice job by Labor with the box out. Havitz letting them know it was an air ball. Frayer to his right. Benson inside, Labor. Labor trying to turn towards the bucket. Muscle his way, turns to his left. Short, rebound, picked up by the Eggies. Jones over to Lofton, look out. Off the rim, big rebound, Vernon goes up for it. What? They whistle Keontae Vernon coming over the back, but I thought the both players went up side by side. Take one more look at it here. High rebound, both players battling for position underneath here. Did Keontae Vernon's right arm elbow come for out and come out and push a little bit in the back? Possibly, but early in the game, I'd like to set up, let him play a little bit. Definitely a key. Keontae Vernon has to stay out of foul trouble. Wilkins, long distance and in. Yeah, tall, Eggies on top. Tall player, much like Laver in uh, Blumberg's, that can really stroke that ball from that side. That's into his right. Braun comes out to his left to Frayer. Eyed by Lofton. Laver. Careful. Frayer hands off. Drives. Up and in. Oh, it doesn't drop. Lofton pulled it down. Uh, he was looking for some contact there. That ball somehow slipped off the front of the rim. Lofton, the graduate transfer from Texas Southern. Oh, nice feed inside to Jones. That's pretty basketball. You got to give credit where credit is due. That's the old give and go. I give it to you. I'll cut to the basket. You give it back to me. Labor bounce pass. Taking time and space away. Harris doing a good job on Benson. Benson back to Labor. Takes it back. Benson drives. Dishes back to Vernon. Braun pulls down. Now he looks for three. And in! What fans can take a seat. And that's a nice jump. That's that extra pass we're talking about. Keontae Vernon, who has the ability to make the 16-foot jumper, gave it to a better outside shooter behind the arc. Harris right at the free throw line, drains it. Oh, he used that high pick nicely. They call that the drag screen. Likes to come back from the right side to the left. Little stop and pop. Redshirt sophomore from Dayton, Ohio, A.J. Harris. That's a Benson special right there. A lefty that loves to drive right, gets the body contact, draws the foul. Look at this one one more time. You get the double team comes, and then Lofton cuts straight to the basket. And then I love this one by here. Kathy Vernon takes the shot, the extra pass. Josh Braun with the escape dribble knocks down the three. Bounce pass, Braun takes it from Benson. Cuts back to Labor. Labor goes to the hoop and puts it in off the glass. What a move by the young big. Harris to his right in the corner, back out. Jonathan Wilkins leaves it for Zach Lofton. Averaging close to 19 points per game. And Deer works around the screen, but Freyer got a hand on it. Labor got his pocket picked out of bounds. Well, that was a great job by Freyer. Getting his hands up, getting that deflection. That's what caused that turnover. Staying high with the passing lanes, getting those deflections will be huge. Aggies lead is two, early on, opening half. That's it. Moves to his left, back over to Frayer, beyond the arc. Looks right, left, goes back right. Braun, looking for some help, coming out was Eli Chua. That's it, leaves it for Braun. Seven on the shot clock. Pulls back down, looks for the hoop. Short, rebound, loose ball. Picked up by the Aggies, Zach Lofton. St. Paul, Minnesota needed. Oh my. Interesting ball handling. Foul committed. 
Well, I think Lofton might have got uh, away with a traveling call there. The ball kind of got away from him up over his shoulder, and then he attacks the big, just gets uh, Oscar Frere up off his feet. He could have called that one easily on either Frere or Labors underneath. But I like the way this kid Lofton is constant energy. Either he's dribbling the ball to the basket or he's moving without it trying to go to the rack. Labor picks up his first. Lop Lofton connects on the front end. New Mexico State with five early rebounds and the Lopes won. Rebounding critical. After this made free throw, you have a full court press here, at least showing a full court press by the Aggies. Trying to deny Benson the basketball. Batson brings it up. Oh, barely got it over before the violation. Coach Jans giving the official an earful. Prayer beyond the arc. Bounce pass inside to Vernon. Vernon picks it up off the floor. Drives to the hoop. Left handed in. What a sweet move by Vernon. Who almost was going to settle for the shot and realize my strength and my power comes when I take these broad shoulders to the rack. Buchanan inside, Lofton off the glass, does it go? Had the open look, beautiful feed by the Aggies. Driving in deer. I think they got a charge on in deer. I think Keontae Vernon stepped in that driving lane and gave his body up for his teammate. It takes that blow to the floor. Maybe a little bit of an acting tap there, but he sold it to the official. Bugs ball. Time on the floor, 9-7, New Mexico State on top. 15-32 to go. Let's send it over to Kate Longwood. All right, thank you guys. Well, as promised, some very uh, famous faces in the crowd tonight as I'm joined by Ann Myers, Rysdale, and Tom Chambers. Guys, as uh, you're taking in this game right now, what comes to your mind when you see the atmosphere here? Bring back the college days from UCLA, but nothing like GCU. The fans are great. The game is great, you know, and I love having Dan here coaching the GCU. But, you know, the students do an unbelievable job. Yeah, definitely providing that six man support. But tailoring off what you said about Dan, what has Marley done for this program, in your opinion? I have no idea what anybody is saying. It is so friggin' loud in here. I've never seen anything like this in my life, seriously. It is just like, I haven't been to a lot of college games recently, but this is tremendous. And, uh, I'm just so proud of Dan and what he's doing here and what this this place is doing. Well, like there are 19,000 kids and there was four and and he said, "Come on down." I'm like, I, "I need to." Finally, we had a night off and I'm happy to be here. It's tremendous. Did you see in your playing days that Dan Marley would be a college coach here at GCU? Uh, not at GCU. No, Westy was here for a while, but it wasn't quite this when Westy was here. But no, I had no idea that he would be at GCU. But I thought he would be a coach. Yes, he's certainly that kind of a guy. And obviously, you had such a prolific career as a Bruin. When you see this atmosphere here on a college campus, how does that transcend to a player on the court when you have this fan support? Well, there's no questions. A lot of excitement. You got to keep your emotions in check. But you know, like Tom said, I mean, Dan does such a great job. He's an unbelievable coach and teacher, and cares about the players. And that's why they want to come here. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining us tonight on the broadcast. All right. We send it back over to you guys. Hey, top that, right? And of course, you can catch more from. And Tom Chambers on Suns broadcast. Fantastic. Tom Chambers and Myers Drysdale, of course, on the Suns coverage. I think, uh, the atmosphere kind of stunned Tom Chambers. <laughs> yeah, he's not quite used to this crowd noise. Although the Suns have picked it up under Coach Triano, that building is not electric as what we got here over on the heart of, in the heart of Phoenix. It used to be. Madhouse on McDowell. Lumberg's in the game, brings it up. On the run. Down low. That was a rifle pass from about three feet. Uh, I thought Blumberg's was going to try to take that thing to the rack. He's got the ability to go coast to coast with it. That's an in inbound. Down by two, GCU. And Deer reaches in, draws the foul. That's his second. City. And I like what we're seeing from Josh Braun right now. He's being really aggressive, whether it's the outside shot or taking the ball to the hole, trying to draw those fouls. It would be wonderful to see Josh Braun, the preseason whack player of the year, go for 20 plus tonight. That's an inbound. Oh my. Keon Jones gets called. 
There's all over Josh Braun. Definitely a game plan going in. Yeah, they, they don't want to let him get off, that's for sure. Holding, strapping, claw. Hey, you don't expect anything less than a rivalry game. Lundberg, some burning underneath. Goes left hand, not there. Braun was there. They got Braun over the back. Yeah. Yeah, he got a little body contact. He got a lot of the ball up top, but that big body underneath is what the officials whistled him for. But I like that fact they're trying to compete on the glass. Mario Jones into Keon Jones. Buchanan motioning the Aggies to get up the court. Sean Buchanan, the sophomore from Durant, Mississippi. Jones. Back down low, Buchanan. Coming out, oh, pokes out by Vernon. Buchanan's gonna pick it up, seven on the shot clock. Crossing center court, five, four. Lofton, driving, stopping, popping, oh my! All right, I don't know if you can play defense any better than what the Lopes just did right there. Oscar Freire got a hand in his face, and he still knocked it down. Vanson drives, the foul committed. I don't know if they got Lofton in there or not. Yes, they did. Look at Lofton one more time, and Oscar Freire is right with him. He has a nice move, gets a little shoulder into the body of Freire, creates just enough space to be able to elevate and knock down the mid-range J. And then on the other end, Casey Benson, twice now going to from uh, with his right hand, has got into the defenders himself and got some contact. Jared Martin in the game. Coach Marley going to his bench. Now they were big up in Seattle with 23 points. Generally the bench plays better at home, but in a rivalry game, you gotta wonder where their emotions are. Shaq Carr, Jared Martin, Lumbergs when he comes in. They all gotta settle themselves down, get into the float quickly, and provide a punch off that bench. Buchanan crossing center court, cuts back to his left, now to his right. That's an I and M back out. Keon Jones dishes back out to Lofton. Lofton beyond the arc, trying to move on Martin. Pulls back beyond the arc and connect. Zach Lofton is on fire early. Yeah, Coach Marley does not want to see him go for 30 points tonight like he did at Colorado State. Five point lead by the Aggies. And led from the opening tip. Benson looks for three. Off the mark, rebound pulled down by Lofton. Lofton brings it up, floats it up high, looking for McCants, out of bounds. That was a high degree of difficulty pass. They had a guy in there, Jared Martin kind of came off of rotating all the way back with the far defender because he's so worried about Lofton's ability to knock down the outside shot. There was a quick, a brief opening, but just not what. Aggies wanted from their bench with a five-point lead in the ball. Wanted to see him make sure they got a clean look. Matt Jackson in for Keontae Vernon. Shaq Carr in the game for Casey Benson. Jackson up high to Blumberg's off the glass and a nice pass from Matt Jackson. Nice pass and a beautiful cut that time by the young rookie. Buchanan back to his right. Lofton. Swarmed by Blumbergs and Martin. Pulls back, looks for three. Oh, goodness gracious. He has got it going. He is at that uh, slow cooker. He has turned the heat up on that thing to high, and he is knocking him down from all over the place. Jared Martin is the Lopes' best defender. Ten for Lofton. Martin. Bounce pass, careful. Jackson finds Carr. Carr cuts back, drives to the hoop. Jack Carr with the charge. Yeah, over penetrated, and the Aggie defender stepped in that, that lane and took that charge. He wants to try to kick the ball back out to the outside. Big rotates over outside that restricted area, took that blow. Johnny McCants. 6'7", redshirt freshman from Las Cruces to inbound. A lot of time left in this one, obviously, and only a six-point disadvantage, but it feels like the Lopes need a stop on this one. They got to try to figure out a way to, to slow down Zach Lofton. Harris. Bounce pass from Keon Jones, turning to the bucket and stripped of the ball with Chua. 
Fifi Adu. Back to Blumbergs, pulls down. Reach in there. Deion Jones. The ability at 6'10 to put the ball down on the basket, uh, on, the, on the floor rather, and try to drive the ball to the basket is absolutely huge for Blumberg. And that's the aggressiveness that Coach Marley would like to see from him because he's got a lot of talent, but he's not always as aggressive as Coach Marley would like him to be. Check that. That was Chua's personal foul. Lofton checks out. Fifi too heavy on the three-point attempt. Mario Jones bringing it up for the Aggies. Back over to Harris. Harris moves to his left. Martin comes out. Lumbers comes back. Now in McCants. Deion Jones. Looking to move. Jackson comes out. Leaves it there for Chua. Chua over to Harris. Harris looking inside. Trying to move on Jackson. Finds a seam. Left hand. Beautiful move to the bucket. That was an aggressive, strong move to the basket. I think Coach Jans is loving what he's seeing out of his team on the offensive and defensive end right now. Martin inside, Jackson. Jackson turns to the bucket. Floater, not there. Lopes getting cold. Yeah, and too many one and dunks. You're not seeing anybody getting their hand on that ball on the offensive uh, glass anymore. 10-1, the margin and rebound into the Aggies. Off the glass and in for Jamario Jones. Timeout on the floor. Marley has seen enough. 7-0 run for the Aggies. Timeout on the floor. 11.30 to go. Opening half. The lead is now 10 for New Mexico State. We'll take this timeout and be back with more. It's a whiteout night. And the Aggies have come to play. I'm Dewey, a student here at GCU studying communications. My dad graduated from GCU in 2009, and he is definitely bleeding purple. He loves GCU to the max. For me, choosing to follow in his footsteps was the best idea I could have chosen. I absolutely love sports, playing them and watching them, and I could talk about them all day. GCU has made it possible for me to pursue my passion of becoming a sports broadcaster. The program they had here and the direction it could take me was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. Knowing that I could talk to a professor or a counselor about literally anything that has to do with my academia or even just my personal life was encouraging and exciting to know. The friends and the roommates that I've had in the last three years have made my quality of life a thousand times better. I am a GCU low and I will forever always be one. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. Just under 12 minutes to go into the first half here at GCU Arena with a score right now 21 to 11. The Lopes trailing, but with the help of the six man trying to turn things up on the court. It is a whiteout tonight at GCU Arena. Guys, it seems only appropriate. This week we saw in the news there was snow in the desert overseas. A wide out in the desert here on campus. Now we know that the record crowd here is 7,500. And guys, I think they're trying to break that tonight. As you see up in the upper rafters, standing room only. And I can't even hear myself talking. So hopefully you're hearing me. And hopefully that energy translates onto the court for the GCU players. Yes, once again, the noise is deafening. Standing room only on the upper deck here at GCU Arena. Yeah, I mean, it's, this place is definitely what Kate is experiencing when she's right next to those uh, students. I actually went up to the upper deck tonight, found a couple, a family of four, brought them down to the second row behind the bench. They were so grateful to come down here and check out the action, but it's the whiteout right now that the Aggies have been white hot and the Lopes have been ice cold. Aggies. 8 of 11 from the field, shooting 73% get this thing started tonight. Meanwhile, the Lopes only 4 of 12. Lopes looking for their first buck in the last two minutes, 14 and counting. Carr to labor, open look, wants three. Rebound in, margin heavily in favor of the Aggies. And once again, bringing it down, Keon Jones to his left, near side. Back out from Wilkins to Harris. Demario Jones, baseline, 
off of Martin. He picks it off. Yeah, they need to get something to the basket here. Not to get fouled. They're shooting one-on-one -on -one the rest of the half. They got to take advantage of that. Laver looks for Fifi, the handoff. Long three. Good for Fifi A.D. And that was a much-needed bucket. Forget what I'm saying about taking it to the rack. Let it do come off the bench and fire a three. And the NBA distance. Mario Jones lays it in nicely to McCants. McCants turning towards the bucket. Vernon on him. Trying to muscle his way. To Mario Jones there to pick up the loose ball and put it away. Yeah, he's an offensive rebound. He's only a tenth in the country at getting offensive rebounds. You gotta know where he's at and box him out. My goodness, eight for Jamario Jones. Rebound. Fifi pokes it up off the floor. Too heavy. Push back out. Look at this one more time. Ball goes up. Nobody puts a body on Jones. He's free to run right to the front of the rim. That's the easiest offensive board he'll get all night. Six points, eight boards for Jones. He's a double-double machine, this kid. Yep. Lofton back in the game. He's got ten. First. He is making it look easy. He got 12 points on 4-6 shooting. He knocked down a couple threes. Bounce pass. Benson inside the arc. Flat hits the rim. Bronze over at the scorer's table. Harris on the run. Right hand. Not there. Very active at the back of the board. Did Jones. It'll belong to the Lopes. Braun in for Fifi Adu. I just can't believe how fast these Aggies all are getting to the basketball. Whether it's the offensive boards, loose balls, or the defensive end. Hey, he's after that ball so quickly, all the other Lopes are sitting now. They're flat footed. Definitely playing at a different gear. Yeah, if these champs are not going to go down quietly, they've been on the top of the Western Athletic Conference for a number of years. Bakersfield was there for like a season. Braun drives. Trying to thread the needle, but he traveled. My goodness. Yeah, switched his pivot foot. Wanted to give up. Go straight up to the basket, but got some help from the weak side defender right there. And then he tries to step through the crevice, but changes his pivot foot. Referee's right on top of that call. Harris to his right. I by Benson. Bounce pass. Keon Jones. Over to Lock. Away from the ball. Just a 15 foul on the most. Sometimes that's not a bad fall. You got Jones trying to move without the basketball. Hey, they were too, too quick to the basketball. In the ball game for the Lopes, number 42, Jared Martin. Alessandro Labor comes out of the game after committing his second personal foul. On the baseline, pulling back off is Wilkins. Wilkins looking for an Andy teammate, finds Harris. Harris near Saul, spin move, gets free. Wilkins, cross court, pulls down a flying Oscar Freire, and Keon Jones makes that look easy. Oh, that was beautiful. They had a long rotation out of that post there. Finds the man on the weak side. He shows the ball. Nobody gets off the double team to get back to the paint. Leaves him a clean line, a lane to the basket. Freire wants three. Not there. They're getting away from their game plan. Yep. They're falling behind. They're losing touch. And they're just firing away from the outside when they need to be taking the ball to the basket. Prayer helped him out. Call that travel. Lopes definitely in need of some sort of a spark here. Actually, that's a good opportunity now for the Lopes to get into their set offense and try to get something better than they've been getting with these quick threes. The reason why they're open behind them the arc right now is because they're not hitting on a consistent basis. Braun for three. Bam! Thank you! Well, that's just Josh Braun saying, it's time for me to show up, put this team on my back, see if he can get a stop on this side of the ball, get another score on the other end. 
Mario Jones leaves it for Lofton. Lofton heaves up a three. Rebound is there. The Yankees on those loose balls under the uh, the board. That was Jones again. Yep. Freyer can't put it all on Keontae Fernandez. Now they needed that. They're losing this crowd. And now with that big follow slam, everybody's coming on glue here. Welcome back. with the floater. That's not there. The rebound put back by guess who? Jonathan Wilkins this time. Yeah, the dribble penetration is having the guys come off of their men to help out. And now all of a sudden they're giving opportunities for offensive rebounds. Casey Benson's been the one player for GCU, the savvy vet that keeps taking the ball to the basket and drawing fouls. 29-19, the score of the Aggies on top. Zach Lofton averaging close to 19 points per game. Has 12 already against the Lopes here tonight. He is one tough hombre. Yeah, well, he's got great ball handling skills. He gets separation from the defenders, and then he's getting clean looks at the rim. He's either driving it all the way to the basket, a mid-size game, or he's pulling up from behind the arc. He, right now, has just been too much for these lumps to handle. It doesn't matter if it's Oscar Freire or uh, Jared Martin's on him. He's taking on all covers, and he's got the Aggies off and running. He's firing both those pistols. Aggies out rebounding the Lopes 17 to 4. He is just fearless, Zach Lofton. 7.05 on the clock, opening half. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. All right, guys. Well, it continues to be famous people in the house tonight. Archie Bradley. And as we know from the D-backs, he made it a point to say this is their house. But you want to own uh, the ballpark for Chase. What do you think about it here? Is this their house? Yeah, well, the fact that I can't even hear you right now in the middle of a timeout uh, says about everything you need to know. So, And even though I wasn't in my seat, I heard him coming out to uh, my song, Public Service Announcement. So... That got me pumped up. This is electric. This is uh, it's pretty cool being courtside for this. From an athlete's perspective, when a crowd is behind you like this, how does that help you elevate your game? That's obviously something you've I mean, taken ownership of. Yeah, I, I'm pumped up just sitting here. So to know you have that on the floor, uh, it really does. You know, to, to make a big play or, or slam, slam a ball after a rebound or something like that, you know, it really, you can feel the energy. It really does uh, kind of elevate your game a little bit. Now, we know you know sports from baseball to football, and they're always playing basketball inside the clubhouse. So, would you take us to the Diamondbacks players who could own their, take care of themselves out on the court? Uh, I'll start with Tywon Walker, Patrick Corbin, Jake Lamb can shoot, uh, Chris always can shoot a little bit too, and I gotta throw Zach Greinke in there too. All right, and of course, baseball season just around the corner. I know you're anticipating an exciting season. What can we expect from the D-backs? Uh, you're going to expect a great team, you know, uh, for it being this early in, in the year and to have so many guys up at Salt River Fields working out together and to just already carry over what we had from a team aspect into this year and, and just the texts and the phone calls and, and seeing Tori and things like that. I just feel like we're so far ahead of where we've been in the past at this point. So it's pretty exciting. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck. And here is a shirt. It's a white out here. Go Lopes, right? Let's All go. Right. And you've also been invited out to the baseball stadium. It's brand new. They're re renovating it. So come out and see a game. Perfect. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Guys, Archie Bradley, let's get back to the action. All right. Yeah. I love Archie Bradley. I went down and checked him out in the playoffs this year against the Dodgers. How about that triple he hit? Oh, that was huge. That's right. I forgot about this. He actually was got to the plate and knocked one up all the way up against Wall. Trying to take everything in his own hands. Long distance off the mark, pulled down. And during the chat with Bradley, Casey Benson hit a couple of free throws. Yeah, I would like to see Taiwan Walker out here rebounding the ball. Drake, he's got ice water in his veins. He graded the free throw line. Drew Braun's getting just swarmed by Joan. Up over the top, off the glass. And Braun, who normally does not complain to the official, saying, I got hit on the elbow. I don't normally blink, uh, bank straight in shots like that. You can into his right, far side. Jones lays it inside. Wilkins trying to turn to the bucket. Back out to Mario Jones. Quickly down to the corner. Buchanan into Lofton off the glass. Oh! Stopped and stoned by Keontae Vernon. Oh, no. Oh, what was the call? 
I think the official thought that the ball hit the backboard first, but it was actually Keontae Vernon who elevates and gets that ball on its way up to the basket. Let's take one more look at it here. I think he might have missed it. Bounce pass, Vernon muscling underneath, off the glass. Well, I love when a player doesn't let a bad call bother him. Oh, looky, looky. I think we just got our makeup call, Barry. <laughs> Lopesel inbound now. These two teams have come to play. The officials definitely have their hands full. Martin, bounce pass, Freyer. Oh, away from the ball, who is it? Deion Jones? They're yeah. too physical with Brown. They're holding him almost every time he's moving without the basketball. And he's just going to have an opportunity now to go to the line. But I love that one by Keontae Vernon, because he's the one that got whistled. It didn't hold his head. He got down on the other end and got the breakaway basket underneath the bucket. And then he gave a little shove to one of the Aggie players who was expecting the inbound pass would cause the guy taking the ball out of bounds to step over the inline. Braun at the line, Eli Chua into the game. So is Gabe Hadley for Jones. As bad as the Lopes have played offensively, it's just a two possession game. Remarkable. Lopes, three of their last three from the field. Braun connects. They've been perfect from the free throw line. Six for six. Lofton's going to bring it up. Frayer's on him. Five and a half to go, opening half. Lofton to his right. Vernon came out temporarily. Oh, there's a turnover. Hadley unable to get it. And you wonder if it's all caused by Frayer's three-quarter court pressure putting it on Lofton. He's so worried about where he thought his man was going to be in a spot. He wasn't there. Delivered the pass to nobody. Four-point lead. Ten at one point. Freyer turns to the bucket. Locked it on him. Bounce pass. John wow, is going to live at the free throw line. These Aggie defenders have not adjusted their play to the official's whistle. Buchanan call. Coach Jans giving the official an earful. Marley wants Benson and Martin to come over for a chat while Braun attempts a free throw. Yeah, hey, Coach Jans, he's not giving him one air for He's giving him two air for A lot of loft on that one. All picked off by Vernon out of bounds. Lofton's going to inbound. Definitely moved it up a gear to the Lopes because they had to. And he's... They put it in fifth from the opening tip. Yes, they have. It's been the Lofton and Jones show. Jones has already got his, se uh, his season average on rebounds with 11. we still got five minutes to go in the first half. Two uh, lost the handle. Martin got a hand on it. The one official deferring to the other one, and that's why the crowd responds. Possession towards the Aggie. Yeah, I like when the officials get together to make the call right, though. You can see yeah, that, was, right. that was the right call. Jared Martin with those long arms, knocking out of bounds. Inbounds, coming in is Jamario Jones, left it underneath. Dishes. Oh, beautiful ball movement, Eli Chua with the bucket. Yeah, but you can't let the ball get that close to your basket on an out of bounds play. The Lopes, well, that's what they want to do when they got baseline out of bounds plays. They should be ready for that. Lopes, three of their last three from the field. Trying to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Vernon just inside the arc. And he hits nothing but net. Wow, that's really nice. They've gone to a box and one. They're putting one guy on Josh Brown, and four guys are trying to guard the perimeter. Buchanan dishes off to Chua. Chua trying to back in on Vernon. Moves left. Oh, that's a travel. Eli Chua.
Keontae Vernon is fired up. They have tried to go at him a couple different times with a couple different players, and he has met the challenge several times now. Look at him slide his feet, that wide base, playing without his hands, using his body and his chest, forces the travel. Four-point lead by New Mexico State turnovers. Nine for the Aggies, just two for the Lopes. Inside, Martin, off the glass, wide open lane. Beautiful dish inside that defense. We talked about the four perimeter players. Got somebody to cut inside that, sliced them open. Uh oh, Buchanan slipped up a little bit, falling on top was Benson. Well, Benson went down hard on his side. We already talked about he's playing with one arm and one leg. Can't afford to get a hip deep. Maybe five in our last five from the field. GCU has narrowed the Aggies' lead to just two. 33 31, 345 to go. We'll step aside and we'll be back with more from GCU Arena after we take this timeout. college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice. I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Hey you, are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in, we're going on an adventure. In Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to experience. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you can earn your degree in fewer than four years and explore everything Arizona has to offer. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. State. They are allowing opponents to just over 64 points, or keeping opponents rather, to just 64 points a game, averaging that, and that average falls to 30th in the country. So guys, both of these teams excel in defense, but tonight having some flashes of brilliancy on offense as well. No doubt about that. This jams its first Experience here at GC Arena, the first year head coach of the Aggies. Inbound by Buchanan, 21 on the shot clock. Mario Jones. GCU's bench outscoring the Aggies 7 to 4. Points off turnovers. The Wolves have that edge 12 to 2. Locked him, driving, swarmed by a sea of white. Just back out. Six on the shot clock. Buchanan trying to find something. Four, three. He's gonna have to drive, stopping and popping. Not there. Rebound is pulled down by Freyer. Oh, they called travel. Oh, my goodness gracious. I cannot believe with some of the calls that they've got on the offense on the other side, and that's Lofton coming up underneath the back there of Flair and Good knocking him to the ground and getting the benefit of the call. Shocker. This is a preeminent programs in this conference. Air ball. Lofton tried something kind of tricky off his back foot. Maybe a bit of a heat check. Step back. Jump shot from about 15 feet. Problem was he shot at 13 feet. Batson crosses center court. We're approaching the three-minute mark. Braun inside. Bounce pass back out. Takes the feed. The three-point attempt. Pulled back down. Benson moves to his right. He's beyond the arc. Braun two. He wants three. Oh, it's too heavy. Pulled down by Hadley. Yeah, they put a smaller player, Buchanan, on Braun, trying to deny him the ball. Did a decent job inside when he hasn't picked up the fouls. Braun moved to the outside that time, trying to get the low to the lead. 
Chua leaves the Brookview Cannon. Bounce pass. Nice feed underneath for Chua. Hoop and a harm. Vernon's going to be called. I'm really impressed with this Aggies interior yep. defensive passing. And they are on the mark more times than not. Look at this one, one more time. Beautiful pass to the post. They get the weak side big. Move it to the basket. Nobody rotates over in time to help out. Non-stop motors. Chua at the line. 65% free throw shooter coming into the game. 8.9 points per game misses. Vernon. Martin, Benson, Freyer, and Braun. Four point lead. Under two and a half to go, opening half. Vernon quickly to Braun. Reached in. Who'd they get? They got Buchanan down there, number one. He's he picked there. up a couple of fouls. Now that's going to be a second trying to battle underneath with Josh Brock. Josh Brock too big, too strong for Buchanan. I think Coach Jans will rethink that matchup in the second half. Matt Jackson makes his way to the scorer's table. 2.21 on the clock. Oh, Josh has missed the last two free throw attempts. Now six of eight. Vernon out. Matt Jackson in. McCants in for the Eggies. Hadley out. The lead is three. 220 and counting. Lofton leaves for Buchanan. Cairns looks inside, goes to his right. Chua, bounce pass into Lofton. Lofton trying to work on Freyer. Right hand, drops. But he got a little bit of a head and shoulder flick. Freyer wants to block his shot so badly, he's anticipating the shot, getting off his four feet too soon. He stays down and waits for Lofton to go up. He's easily got the leapers to go and block his shot after he's left his hand. 16 points for Lofton. Big three-pointer there. Casey Benson, we talked about him needing 12 to 15 points tonight, but he knocked down the second outside day of the game. Charge on Zach Lofton. Martin with the defense. 135 and the lead is two. And Jared Martin's got to lead the Western Athletic Conference over the last three years in drawn charges. Look at this one more time. So good at anticipating where the, def uh, the offensive player is going to try to drive to, beating them to that spot, staying wide, and taking the blow. Bounce pass, Braun turns to the bucket, trying to move on Hanley. Stop, muscling his way. Got a little bit on that ball, and the Yankees come up with it. They're getting away with elbow blows on Josh Braun. Hanley, Buchanan inside. Chua, Chua, back out, McCants. McCants to Buchanan, quick ball moving. Hanley, bounce pass down in the post. Chua, swarmed there. Turnover. That's it. Chua have the pass out of the double team. Braun, back over, Jackson. Jumper and good. This game is tied. Well, you got to give the Lotus a lot of credit. They were getting beat by double figures. And oh, my goodness, Coach Jan's going to take a timeout with 50 seconds to go in the half. He doesn't want this place to get completely the roof to come off of it. Wow, Jan's and Chua. Interesting interaction there as Chua came off the floor. Take a look at the D. You don't always double team a, a defender because he's beating you on the post. You double team him because you want to force him into turnovers. And then you take that ball quickly to the other end. You make the extra pass. You find a wide open Matt Jackson on the baseline and he knocks it down. Lowe's getting a really nice bump off of their bench right now. So often you see Martin Carr and, and Jackson here in about the last six to eight games have really come in and changed the complexion of the basketball game, doing it with the D off the bench. Nine points from the GCU bench. Jackson connects for his first two points of the game. The Lopes with four steals, the Aggies with none. Well, that's what they're very good at, turning the other, their, their opponents over, because they're going to need those steals the way they're getting beat up on the boards right now. 
However, the other side of that is that, hey, hey, if we're shooting free throws at one end and making them, we don't have a chance for offensive rebounds. If we're getting steals on the defensive end, we don't have a chance for defensive rebounds. So maybe that's why there's a, a big difference in the rebounding totals here in this first half. Under a minute to go, opening half. Just as it was advertised, the Aggies came out and knocked the Lopes in the mouth, but the Lopes have rallied to come back to tie the game. Loose ball picked up by Freyer. Give me that candy. Oh, my. Another turnover. That's 11 for the Aggies. Just three for the Lopes. 22 and counting. Lopes have an opportunity to play for the final shot of the half here. Coach Marley drawing up and directing the action. Benson, nine on the shot clock. Freyer wants three. Oh, it's not there. Might have shot it to Jones. Soon. Five, look out. Jones heaves it up off the mark underneath the bucket at the buzzer. Not there. No bucket. Oh, my goodness. 37 37 is the score. Oh, see what that red light was on. Couldn't light quite see on. the red light, but you can see the double zeros. Yeah, ball in his hand, red light is on. We're not hit up. Red 37. Let's send it over to Kate. All right, thank you guys. I am here with Coach. And a lot has happened already in that first half. Well, let's start with the good. Down the stretch in that later in the half, you guys really turning things up and uh, only committed three turnovers and then 14 to two points off turnovers. How pleased are you with that stat? Yeah, we're doing a good job creating turnovers, but we're doing a bad job of penetration. And we knew Lofton was able to get off. So we got to get up, make them drive, get help. Then we got to do a better job on the boards. I mean, that's their strength. They're a great rebounding team. But we started slow, but we battled back. Uh, we just got to keep working. Yeah, with the team, sh with the uh, Aggies shooting nearly 60% and your team's bread and butter, that defense, what do you want to see physically from the team in the second Well, half? we just got to do a better job of knowing who we're guarding. I mean, Lofton, like I said, he's a guy who can get hot. Uh, he got hot early. We got to make him put it on the floor. And then, once again, they're getting second and third attempts. It's hard to play good defense if you give them two or three times. All right, thank you very much, Coach. We look forward to talking to him it, after, hopefully, a victory for the Lopes as they go for it and try to turn up the heat on defense, trying to own the scores in the second half, guys. This game is tied at 37. The Aggies led at one time by 13 before the GCU battled back. Red Panda here at halftime. Kate will be back with the commissioner of the Western Athletic Conference, Jeff Hurd. So leave it right there on your view. I've been to other colleges, and GCU is the most student-friendly campus that I've been in. I work full-time, I have a young family. Coming to class at night after work has been perfect with my schedule. It allows me to still, you know, work a, a 50 to 60 hour a week, but also come to school. I could have gone online, but I like the in-class experience. I work full-time, and I'm also a parent, so having evening classes have been the best option for me. Well, my favorite part of the program has definitely been the students and the faculty, um, especially the students. Our cohort has been really close and we've become friends even outside of class. We all have a relationship now and it really helps you get through the program. The professors have all been great. The focus on the individual students is unlike any other campus I've been in. What I've learned throughout my curriculum here at GCU I've been able to apply on, on multiple levels. It is one night a week, so it's a lot easier to attend classes, especially since I like the in-person interaction. I know this knowledge is going to help me. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. It's the renowned uh, Red Panda Sporty Purple in front of a wide out crowd. We've got it all covered here 
at TCU Arena. It is a tie game at the break. 37 all as New Mexico State comes to GCU Arena as the Lopes kick tip off their home opener for WAC play, which leads us right into our guest. I came over with your Lopes halftime show, and I'm joined now by WAC Commissioner Jeff Hurd. And Jeff, we've seen a very competitive and exciting first half in the books so far. What stands out to you so far in this matchup? Well, it really has been. It really went where we should be right now. A tie game between two of the better teams in the conference and you know, great atmosphere. You couldn't ask for anything better than this. And you've seen some top teams come out of the WAC each year, but this year, very unique because after non-conference play, we're seeing so many teams with winning records. What's that say about the strength of this conference? Well, I think our goal, you know, our goal every year is to get better, and that's what we've gotten. We've gotten better each year. Last year, we had four teams in postseason play. This year, we're, we're come out of the, at this start of the conference play with a 15 RPI as a conference, which is our highest ever. So we've had a good non-conference season. The conference season will be just as well. And when you look at athletics across the board, how excited are you that now GCU is eligible for that WAC play and tournament eligible? Well, really excited for a lot of reasons. One being being able to participate in all our conference championships. So I think it also increases the, the interest and the value of our basketball tournament in Las Vegas. Bigger crowds, another great team will be there. Just better competition overall. And this is your fifth season as a commissioner. How has the conference changed over the past few years? Well, I, I think our goal always has been since we began when Grand, when Grand Canyon first came into the conference, our goal is to get better each year. And I think we've been able to accomplish that. We still have a ways to go, but we've made progress and we've made significant progress over that time period. And one of the growth areas of growth we've seen is the WAC Digital Network. What's it mean to the conference to have a platform like that to showcase athletics across the board for various universities? Well, it means everything because the only way you can grow is to continue to get exposure and, and, and to have events that people want to see. And this is this happens to be one of them here tonight. Yeah. So that that's, as you grow the conference, those are the things that we want at every conference school, for, you know, to be honest. Right. We're proud to be a part of the network tonight. And when others are tuning into this network tonight, what do you want them to know about the WAC conference? I want them to know that every year and every, every month, our entire staff, our member institutions, coaches, administrators, all working towards a common goal, and that's to improve the conference. And you just touched briefly on Vegas. We were just in our, at our Leeds Arena last week with uh, the Lopes, and I know you're anticipating a big crowd for the tournament March 7th through 10th for both women's and men's basketball. What can fans expect from the competition this year? Well, I think the one thing that a lot of people don't realize during the conference season is once you get on a neutral floor, things change a little bit. And there's a lot at stake. Each game means a little bit more. And at the end, obviously, a trip to the NCAA tournament. So it's just, it's a great event. If you're a basketball fan, you know, come and watch it. You'll enjoy it. Yeah, a great uh, venue because you can stay right there, walk to the arena, catch different games. And then also transitioning to baseball, it's uh, just around the corner. GCU will be hosting the WAC tournament for that. How is GCU's campus a good place for that? We saw the most soccer, now baseball, for the WAC tournament plays to be played here. What is that like? Well, everything is it's like every other championship. We always try to get the best venues we can, you know, get the best competition we can, and the venue always adds to it. So. So those are things that we continue to work on every year. And as, as we go from year to year, we all start to evaluate what we've done, what we've done well, what we've done maybe not so well, and how do we improve it? All right. Well, thank you so much, WAC Commissioner Jeff Hurd, for joining us right now on the Lopes Halftime Show. We will be back with more as the Red Panda continues her act. Plus, it is a whiteout here, and it is a sellout crowd. And Barry and Scott have the highlights from this tied game. Stay with us. We'll be right back. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. 
GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Finding the right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice. I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Back live at GCU Arena, a packed house, and it is everything it was built to be. Tied at 37 between the Aggies Woo! and the Wolves. Barry Vitell, Scott Williams, we are so glad that you tuned into this one uh, because the Aggies came out of the gate, and boy, they went from first gear right into fifth <laughs> because they came to play. Yeah, the Lofton. I mean, yeah. that guy was like, shot out of a can, and he was fantastic. He had them off and running. That first seven minutes, they were 8 of 11 from the field, shooting 73%, cooled down a little bit after that, just went 8 of 17 the rest of the half. Give the Lopes credit on defensive end. Rebounding, having a little bit of difficulty underneath the glass, Jones. but the turnovers has, have been in the, in the favor of the Lopes, bench scoring in favor of the Lopes. Yeah, they're getting killed on the glass right now. Yeah. Jones is having his way with the boards. I think he's got 11 in the first half, but they're getting points off of those turnovers. They've been absolutely healed. They're plus 12 points off of turnovers, and they're doing a good job. The bench just come in and give him a nice little bump, too, at nine points off the pine. Let's check out our first half highlights. Begin with some flashes of greatness from the Aggies. A give and go to Jamario Jones. Oh, I love the give and go right there. That's just pretty basketball. So old school. And then Labors. I love this one right here. This is another one of those big man moves. Show the show and go a little up and under. The Keontae Vernon. He was had a nice first half on the defensive end. They put it in his left paw right there. He's got eight points to go along with four boards. And then I love this kid, Lofton. He might be my favorite whack player right now. His ability. He's going to put the ball on and do some things off the bounce, knock down the outside shot. He was going early and often, and then Harris not to be the light. He's like a, a free beat guy taking the ball to the rack as well. And then I love the way it came in off the bench. A dude stepping way back from behind the arc for where Steph Curry and the boys shoot it from. Knock down the long three right there. And Keon, well, Keon Jones, he came back and said, I can take the ball to the rack as well. But this was a big one right here. This is when the crowd got back into it with Keontae Vernon with that follow slam dunk and Josh Brock. He talked about the mayor having to do his darn thing tonight. He need to go for 20 points. He's off to a great start tonight, knocking down the outside shots. And then I love this one right here. You put the double team on the big, force him into a mistake, leads to an easy pitch up in the head for a little uh, Pass over to Braun, finds Maggie Jackson down on the baseline, and Jackson five, knocks it down. First half, stats 57% from the field, New Mexico State 44.8%. Four of 10 from the arc of the Lopes, three of seven are the Aggies. Rebounding margin, wow, 22 to eight. Assist 10 to five for the Lopes, the steals five zip for GCU. And you already talked about the uh, points off of the turnovers, but it's hard to overlook the uh, rebounding margin right now. They're going to have to step it up in the second half are the, are the Lopes. Yeah, they can't afford to get crushed on the glass here in the second half. I mean, basketball games, you got to play defense to win good basketball games, but you better rebound if you want to win a championship right now. Aggie's showing they're the better rebounding team. The Lopes want to compete with this team come, you know, during the regular season in a whack play. They better pick it up on the glass. All right, we're tied at 37. More of our halftime festivities from GC Arena here in Phoenix. After we step aside for just a moment, we'll be right back after this.
Grand Canyon University Championship Golf Course features over 7,200 yards of tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, and a 22,000 square foot clubhouse. The Lope House Restaurant, serving modern American cuisine, is open to the public seven days a week. Come experience the best golf and dining destination in the heart of Phoenix. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. Hey you, are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in, we're going on an adventure. In Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to experience. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you can earn your degree in fewer than four years and explore everything Arizona has to offer. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. Welcome back. We're all knotted up here at the break. 37 all in Grand Canyon's home whack opener against when it comes to conference action, 37 all. And uh, as predicted, Dan Marley said it was going to be tough to shut Lofton down. And he has had his way in the first half with 16 points. He's 6-9 field goals. But the big story here is rebounding. And New Mexico State coming on top of that. Jones leading the way with 13 boards, 6 points, 22-8 advantage for New Mexico State on the boards. Dan Marley telling me his team really has to step it up and own the boards in the second half. That's the message to his team at this break. Meanwhile, advantage GCU when it comes to turnovers, 12 to three there. The mayor, Josh Braun, leading the way with 11 points for the Lopes. Keontae with eight. It's a very flashy plays out there. Casey Betson, seven points to his name. Now, Dan Marley, he was worked up at the break, guys. He was sweaty. He was really into it. We know he brings intensity to this game. But with a 37 time score at the break, when you saw Lopes turn it up down the stretch of that first half, I imagine he was happy and wants to see him just carry off that momentum here in the second half. No doubt about it. Josh Braun, you mentioned 11 points in that opening half, over 1,500 in his career. There Forrest, 2195, long way to go. Whew. That's a lot of points. Wow. 2195. Light it up. Inbound to open the second half right in front of our broadcast position. City and Deer takes the ball. And we are underway. Lopes fans will remain on their feet as they do in the opening half until the Lopes hit their opening bucket. And Deer to his left. To Mario Jones hands it off for Lofton. Lofton has 16. Back out of Harris. Harris goes around Burnt. Oh, got a oh, look at the fortuitous bounce. Rebound. And once again, it's the Aggies. Jones. Lofton pulls down. Drains it. Offensive rebound. Yep. Made it focal point at halftime and tell him to get on the glass. They almost got the turnover, like you said. Lucky bounce to the outside guy, but you got to corral that long shot. You can produce a long rebound. Get up there and go get it. Braun puts the shoulder down, hands it off. That ball short, nobody home for a rebound. Benson short. How does the ball always end up in Jones's hands? Harris off the glass, doesn't go, put back, not there, loose ball, Benson trying to get after it, it'll belong to the Aggies. There's Jones on the glass, keeping it alive one more time. He's got 14 boards in this game, and he's making it look easy. Put a body on 10. Labor called upon in the rebounding area. He's got the goose egg right now. He's got two points in the game. Jones. Surveying, hands it off to Lofton. Freyer comes out on him. Back out, Harris pulls back beyond the arc. Now driving on Benson, goes left hand, doesn't go. Aggie's got a hand on it, did Jones. Surprise, surprise, it didn't go in. You gotta stop leaving Jones to try to go over and block somebody's shot. Pray they miss and just keep Jones off the glass. Mario Jones grabbed that left shoulder temporarily. Fernan, oh, it doesn't go. Fortuitous bounce out of bounds. It'll belong to the Lopes. I think it was a fortuitous call that time, but give Waver some credit underneath here, working hard, trying to keep that ball alive. Good ball out of the Aggies. Labor 
Leaves it for Braun. Beyond the arc. Labor. Leaves for Benson. Benson. Labor. Looks to drive baseline. Fade away. In. There's Alessandro. Oh, he's showing the total package tonight right now. Put him in hard stride to the basket and snap it and park. Throw it in reverse. Knock down jump shot. Back out in deer beyond the arc. Not there. Harris was calling for the three and it doesn't go. Tied at 39. Benson Freer. Freer to his right. Benson bounce pass inside the Vernon. Vernon looking to move on Jamario Jones. Right hand, not there. Short, Vernon able to pick it up. Goes left hand in and off the glass. Vernon's right shoulder. He is in pain. Oh, no. They can't afford to lose him. He's one of their top rebounders. He is grimacing. First lead for the Lopes, 41-39. And Keontae Vernon is in a great deal of pain holding that right shoulder. Yeah, he had a game earlier in the year when he had to leave because of a... Uh, he got banged on that shoulder. Hopefully he'll be able to bounce back quickly. Lopes with their first lead inside. Does it last long? Not there. Foul committed as Jonathan Wilkins was driving. I like the way this team is coached. They are coached. If you give the basketball up, you make a strong, quick cut either to the ball or to the basket. He just gave the ball up to Lofton, and Lofton's an unselfish player. He had it going on automatic in the first half, and now he finds his big rolling down the bucket. Wilkins with some good hands, almost got the three-point play to go. Wilkins at the line, 57% free throw shooter coming into the game. I'll tell you. He a 57% shooter. And then you got all the student body, the havocs. They got the big heads. They got a fidget spinner. They're spinning around. They even got the flying tomato. They got the uh, X game champ uh, underneath uh, the basket. That'll be a distraction. Wilkins connects. I think that's actual size. Oh, my. No argument from me. <laughs> got the up there yeah. as well. He's been getting it from some of the NBA coaches here recently. Right on. Labor, bounce pass, Braun. Muscles his way and puts it on. You nailed it, Barry. He absolutely beasted him down low using that strength in those wide shoulders. I think that's how he excels. Oh, Lofton was driving, and then Labor's going to be called. Well, Labor's up straight up and down. He's like 6 o'clock at 12 o'clock. He's straight up and down. Lofton jumps in the Labor's right there. When you jump into a guy's chest, of course his arms are going to drop a little bit. Fitchell's got to be a little bit more savvy than that. Lofton connects. Been perfect from the free throw line. Yeah, when you go for 30 and you're averaging almost 20 points a game, Officials know that. They know you're a scorer as well. They're going to give you some whistles. That's money. What's he got tonight? This kid's on fire. He already got 20 in the game tonight. Another stellar athlete from the state of Minnesota. I have to throw those references in wherever I can. You, you do like that yeah. great state of Minnesota. Yeah. We got a little off ball action here. Clearing out. Somebody down there on the baseline here. <laughs> Look at it one more time down here. Is it, is it Josh Braun down here banging, banging down low with is that Buchanan? No, it wasn't Buchanan. That was uh, Denier. It, it looked like Denier got the worst of it. He had a Josh Braun bow to the side of the head and got whistled for the foul. That's no fun. Third on Endear. Martin for three. Rebound pulled down by Will yes. Jamario Jones. Keon Jones. Near side. Looks for three. Heavy. This has got to stop. Oh, oh he lost it. Goodness. Wilkins Goodness. lost the basketball. He clearly had the rebound, but he took his eye off it for a split second as he was going to try to find it. A, a smaller player to get the ball, too, and just had it slip out of his hands into the front row. Lopes lead by one. The Martin near side takes it from Benson. Freyer drives. Oh, picked off by Lofton. That kid can do 
Oh, my goodness. That corner is like the Bermuda Triangle for the Aggies. Well, the last two times they went down there. Well, hustling back after the, the block dunk, getting back there playing defense, forced a turnover. How many times have the Lumps turned over the Aggies tonight? Labor hopping his way in. Hooping a harm. That was close. That's that Euro step they talk about that you see a lot of these international players coming forward and doing the close. That hippity, and he hippity hop, and he got the ball in the basket. I'm over here shuffling my forearms like I got gators on my arms or something. I thought he had trouble, but that was a nice, clean move by the young big. Picking that ball up while you're taking that first step. Officials don't count it. Continue to the basket, take the blow, concentrate and finish. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Thank you guys. I'm joined by members of the GCU Outdoor Recreation. I have Chad Schlund from who is coordinator and Rachel Smith, who is the rec student manager. And first and foremost, Chad, tell me a little bit about what outdoor recreation encompasses and how you can be involved. Yeah, so outdoor recreation is essentially every activity that you can do outside. That's kayaking, paddleboarding, hiking, camping, backpacking, you name it, that's pretty much what it is. Arizona offers many adventures. Can you tell me some of uh, the activities outdoor that GCU is involved in? Yeah, so we try and get everyone um, out to see all parts of Arizona and experience new things. So we have a really diverse state. We have snow, mountains, lakes, desert. Um, so we go up to Flagstaff, Payson, Sedona, all those little places to check them out. What are some of your favorite activities? My favorite strenuous is that height? What was that? I've been wanting to do that. How strenuous is the height? Um, it's a pretty intense hike, but it's so worth it. It's about 10 miles in and 10 miles out, but it's so worth the view. And when you're doing activities like that, it's no wonder you were named National Outdoor Champion. Tell me a little bit about what this means and how you guys became champions. Yeah, so the competition that it was is uh, it's through a company called Outdoor Nation. Um, it's a campus challenge where our goal was to get as many of our students here outside. And we actually got 800 students out there and we won it. Um, it just gives us a bigger, a bigger platform for GCU to keep students coming here and getting more and more involved. All right, well, thank you for all that you guys do. A great message after all, guys. The rest of the nation right now is suffering from uh, wintry conditions, from blizzards and snowstorms and lots of rainfall. And here in Arizona, it's just about always sunny. So you should be outdoors just like these guys. Yeah, we had like one one day of winter there with that rain. And then it was spring again. Beautiful state snow up in Flagstaff. You can go skiing and come on back down and head poolside if you want down in the valley. Three point Lopes lead. Second half, four of eight from the field. New Mexico State, one of six. Labor. Well, what the Lopes do so well is close the half and take the momentum to the locker room. Although they kind of got a slow first minute start, they have really picked it up and they've increased their uh, energy and taken this lead. Get another turnover. Oh, another turnover. Freya, be careful. Gave it up to Martin. Benson. 14 turnovers. 15 now for New Mexico State. Just four for the Lopes. Martin, Braun. Braun to his right. Labor's going to be called. Got that knee up. We're going to take a look at this one more time here. Trying to set that screen there, a double high pick. I thought Labor was set with a white wide base. A little surprised by that call. Some of the other physical play we've seen gone on tonight has yeah, gone on. Let these teams play. I don't care what team that was on. Lofton. Wilkins. Three attempts. In and out. But Lofton's back there. 
And there's just no doubt about it. The Lopes have got to be on the ball. Lofton just came in there from the back door and just flew by people to pick up that, that ball. You know, and, and this, this is Oscar Frere, who is probably their best defender. He just doesn't hold his box out out there at the free throw line. Lofton's constant energy. Jones is constant energy. You got to hold them all the way off until you or one of your teammates has secured the rock. Jackson in for labor. Twenty-one points for Zach Lofton. Five of five now. Six of six from the charity strike. Uh, we, you know, you talked to Coach Marlin. He was worried about Lofton going for thirty tonight. At this rate, he might go for thirty-five. There's just no let up. Batson takes it from Matt Jackson. Stole a page right out of the Aggie playbook. A little give and go. They're going to need Jackson to step up like that. Jamaria Jones. Timeout. Yeah, officials called the timeout there. I think they got an injured player. Is that Jamario, Jamario Jones? Yeah. The big rebounder with 15 boards, six points, limping to the sidelines. Get us one more time to give and go. Benson just uses Jackson as a turnstile. Rubs the defender right off him. Next thing you know, the defender's looking at the back of Benson's jersey. Well, he's cramping up that right leg and being worked on right now. Mario Jones will cramp all. Oh, look at how far away Zach Lofton. He could hit it from the parking garage. Yeah, he certainly did. He wasn't that far away from the GCU bench when he rose up and shot that one. 25 for Lofton. Martin driving floater flat. Aggies ball. Down by one are the Aggies. 13.42 to go. Boy, I can oh. see Jamario Jones yeah, over there pain. screaming oh, at pain. Down. He can barely, he can't even sit down. He can't stand up. His hammies are locked. Oh, that is a painful feeling. Look at Matt Jackson sliding those biscuits. Taking that charge. Harris is third. I got a clear view. But yeah, there, you, there you go. You can see how much Look pain that. that young man is. He cannot get his uh, muscles to stop contracting. Doesn't matter if he's standing, sitting. He can't bend his knees. <laughs> I've been there before. Oh. That's dehydration. Freyer. Off the glass and in. Oscar Freyer over Lofton. They're getting opportunities now. The Lopes are driving the ball into the paint. Freyer's first bucket of the night. That was a shocker to see. He's doing it on the defensive end, though. At least trying to slow down Lofton. Harris to his right. Working on Martin. A little off balance. Chua hands it back over. Seven on the shot clock. Harris got a move. Jackson's there. Great D by Jared Martin. Benson on the run. Benson down in the corner. Freyer wants three. Loose ball. Picked up by the Aggies on the floor. Martin's going to be called. That's what it takes in a rivalry game. Can't be afraid to go down and skin your knee or take one on the elbow. Yeah, it's a foul, no doubt about it. And it's the fifth GCU team foul. And there's still 12 minutes and 39 seconds to go in a half. But you got to love the hassle. Coach Marley, he's coaching up his troops. I love watching this matchup right now between Lofton and Frere on this possession. Harris the end around, back out. Buchanan quickly, Chew it to Harris. Harris to his right, ooh, almost got picked off by Frere. Lofton up over Frere, short air ball, out of bounds. Yeah, Coach James can't believe it. He said, my guy doesn't shoot air balls. It had to have been deflected. Look at this one more time. I, I could see these guys at the other end. They were locked up like Fred wanted to get a stop. And you can see, just a nice challenge. Maybe got a piece of the wrist on the follow through, but certainly didn't touch the ball. Shot car in the game. Feeds it to Freyer. Freyer turns to the bucket beyond the arc. 
Over to Jackson. Jackson, dribble handoff. Martin for three. Short. Where is my guy, Josh Braun? Some of these wide open looks, I'd like to see him back in his basketball game and get a couple of these shots. They do is going to get an opportunity. Oh, my Harris connects. Tied up at 50. Uh, this seems like this could be one of those games that comes down to the final minute. Maybe the last team with the basketball will have the advantage. Yeah, my heart can take it. Jackson, short. Nobody home for the rebound. Lofton flies by Frayer. Jackson's on him, pulls back. Not there. Rebound. Martin. Hey, he's missing Jamario Jones in the rebounding area now. Out. Oh, severe cramping. Keontae Burning is going to make an appearance back. That's a good sign after he went down in great deal of pain with that right shoulder. Bronze at the scorer's table as well. Eight, seven on the shot clock. Shaq Carr moves to his left, looks for an opening, slices, floater off. Shaq took a shot up, loft into Chua. Chua left hand, the foul on Martin. No bucket. This action is fast oh, and furious. 10.51 on the clock. We are knotted at 50 in Phoenix. Between the Lopes and the Yankees. The Grand Canyon University Championship Golf Course features over 7,200 yards of tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, and a 22,000-square-foot clubhouse. The Lope House Restaurant, serving modern American cuisine, is open to the public seven days a week. Come experience the best golf and dining destination in the heart of Phoenix. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go Lopes. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Welcome back with just under 11 minutes to go. We're still tied up in the Lopes WAC home opener against the Aggies. But looking forward to their schedule and what lies ahead. On Saturday, they stay put right here at GCU Arena going up against UTRGV. And then they hit the road at Chicago State on the 18th and UMKC on the 20th before returning home to face William Jessup here on the 23rd. If you catch the action on Cox Channel 4, your view. Before they head back out for the month of January on the 27th, it's at Utah Valley. And then February, a lot of home games where you can catch the action here at GC Arena and right here on Channel 4, starting with UMKC on February 1st. Tied at 50. Chua misses the front end. Lopes with 19 points off of turnovers. Aggies back up by one. Braun back in. Vernon back in. Fifi Adu checks into the game. Benson takes it from Carr. Braun eyed by Lofton, moves to his right. Stop it, back out, Benson quickly to Carr. Carr in the corner to Fifi Adu. 10 on the shot clock. Six, five, Fifi wants three. In and out, rebound, pulled down by Chua. Great job defensively by the Aggies. They got the stop they needed. Nothing penetrated inside below the free throw line for the Lopes on that possession. Bounce back, oh my goodness, how did they get that ball? McCants. Foul committed. 
That's why you need Keontae Vernon on the floor. On that glass, down there battling with a couple Aggies underneath. Great interior pass. Adu actually had the ball, and he knocked it back underneath to the Aggie, who yes. couldn't get it to go down. Keontae Vernon down there patrolling the paint. Carr brings it up, moves to his left around Buchanan, driving on Chua, loses the handle. Buchanan drives, back out. There's a charge. Oh, these looks. I'll tell you what, they have done the job defensively tonight, especially here in the second half. And holding the 3 of 12, excuse me, 3 of 13 shooting from the floor, under 25%. And now they just forced the Aggies into their 17th turnover. They still got nine minutes and 51 seconds to go in this game. And I count 13 of those turnovers as being forced by the Lopes. Lopes need a bucket. They're all for their last five from the field, a span of about three and a half minutes. The lead is just one. Carr. Back to Vernon. Vernon turning, twisting. Left hand. Too heavy. They do. Couldn't even find his way close. McCants put up a stone wall in front of the bucket. I think Vernon had an easier shot with the right hand, maybe because of that right shoulder bothering him. He went into a tougher shot with the left, the lefty hook spin move. Buchanan driving baseline, back out underneath. Oh, the slam not there. A lot of big bodies underneath. The do went up high with those long arms. It was that. And Deer. And Deer went up and tried to emphatically finish that with the lefty slam. Check out this one more time. He moves from the outside. He sees his young player going along the baseline. He cuts down the middle of that lane there, tried with the left hand to challenge a dude. Up on the 10th floor. 78% free throw shooter. City and Deer misses the front end. Native of France, Redshirt Jr. Averaging just over nine points per game. That drops. Aggies up by two. Carr, near side. Comes back out, bounce pass. Benson inside, Vernon was all along, and he couldn't put it home. Uh, he tried to put it home in one motion while he was slicing to the basket, jumping into the air, received the pass. I've yeah, been better off coming down right. Gathered, gone back up with strength. City and Deer wanted that slam again. Not there, but the put back off the glass. They're just so quick on that, on that offensive end. Whether they're slicing to the basket or they're going to the boards, just out, just faster than the Lopes. 36-16 rebounding margin. Fifi driving. Kicks out Benson for three. That's short. They have gone stone cold. McCants off the glass and in. Oh, he went down hard, but boy, what a spectacular finish. McCants and Payne. Having that left hip. Casey Benson now pulling out his toe on the, the GCU bench like he could be cramping up. Cants banged up. Demario Jones was cramping up. Looks like he's making his way back to the uh, locker room or back further down into that tunnel area for Jones. And Casey in the Lopes tunnel getting that right calf worked on. 8.05 on the clock. These kids don't hydrate enough. <laughs> I understand that this is a, you know, a vital game and spending a lot of energy, maybe doing a little more sweating than you generally do in this hot box tonight. You got to make sure you're hydrating prior to the game the night before. Freer. Fifi looks for three. Too heavy. Loose ball picked up by the Aggies. Oh, for their last eight are the Lopes from the field. Span of over five and a half minutes. Vernon on that glass, pulled down his seventh, eighth rebound of the game. That connects for Freer. 
Lopes needed that bucket there. They've been working hard on the offensive end, had some good looks. Just hadn't been able to get anything to go until that big three by Frere. Deontay Vernon called for the foul. The Lopes down by three. 56 to 53. They have hit for one of their last 10 from the field. The Lopes and Oscar Freyer connects with that much needed three. But defensively, it is uh, far and away the Aggies ball game here tonight. Rebounding that one. Rebounding the ball, they've been fantastic. But give the Lopes credit too. They've been forcing some turnovers as well. I slide your feet, taking charges. Getting in there, being aggressive, slapping at that ball, getting deflections. Those are the only ways the Lopes have been able to score consistently is by getting turnovers and getting it down to the other end and getting points off of those turnovers. They got 19 of their points off of these 17 Aggie turnovers. But they got to get on the glass. They got to get no on the doubt. glass. They're getting crushed on the board. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, speaking of Oscar, he made national headlines um, after the game at Illinois for his flashing play. Check, uh, take a look at what his teammates have to say after he received over 2 million hits on the internet, plus shout outs from some NBA stars and made SportsCenter's top 10. I, like I said, I had the best view of the house. I was literally right underneath it. I kind of boxed my guy out. Another guy came in and got the worst of it. As you can see, um, he just he just didn't stop. He just you know what I mean. He he jumped and then for whatever reason, feel like he was on had a jetpack and just kept going. And it was just it was just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I kind of feel bad for the guy who got dunked on. <laughs> Just getting GCU noticed. I mean, at the end of the day, that's all I want to do for the, for the school is to get GCU noticed um, because we know we're coming into a four-year transition period as in we get to go to the tournament this year. Yeah. We're ending it. So just getting us that notice that we, we're here. We're, we're, trying to, we're trying to win. We're trying to fight. And um, getting a couple of notice from a, a couple of big guys in the NBA, uh, Ivan Rabb, the placement of Memphis Grizzlies. Um, who else? Marquise Chris, the placement of Phoenix Suns here. So, I mean, it was just, it was just a fun experience. Love to see Oscar Freyer with a put-back dunk like that. As they have gone a bit chilly here as of late. The Yankees back up by three. Freyer with five in the game tonight. That was an incredible oh, yeah. follow jam. I, it's almost like he doesn't come up from the ground. It sounds like he comes down from the rafters. He's up so high on some of those plays and I think Chippy Nichols is the player that uh, Keontae Vernon felt sorry for <laughs> in Illinois team. He Seven, got the worst of it. 15 and counting. Five point lead for New Mexico State. Freyer driving. Oh, he wanted to put it home. He wanted to slam that thing. He took off about four feet from outside the paint. Didn't quite have the elevation to get all the way to the rack on that one. Lofton driving, left hand not there. Vernon, Lopes getting some hands in there. Yeah, between Freyer and City and Deer, they haven't been able to make those statement dunks. Labor open for three. Does he put it in? No. Heavy rebound is up, and Vernon grabs it. Nice to see that. He's in pain, though. Yeah, he got a rebound. He you suck it up for these rivalry games, but controlling the defense and the offensive glass the last two possessions. Flutter and good for Labor. That's one thing I love about these two freshmen, Blumbergs and Labors. They miss a shot. They're not worried. Coach Marley has given them the confidence to shoot it again. Whoops, down by three. Lofton. Driving baseline. Stone by Vernon. Freyer picks it up. They do. Over to Vernon. Vernon looks for the bucket. Oh, it rings out. Ten points, ten rebounds for Keontae Vernon, his 13th double-double of his career. 
Playing with a sore right shoulder. Harris. Inside, Shua moves left hand and in. Nice move around the corner. Oh, really good spin move with the play with his back to the basket. Chua doing a nice job. He's got seven points to go along with three boards, and he's doing the job defensively. Coach Marley wants a teal. As a word for Fifi Adu, Vernon uh, laborious up the floor. He is in some significant difficulty coming up the floor. Number of players wrapping up a little bit. A lot of folks making their way here. We've heard from Archie Bradley, and Tom Chambers, and Ann Myers Drysdale. How about John McLaughlin? Oh, yeah. Milwaukee Bucks legend makes his home here in the valley in the wintertime, sneaking down out of that cold Milwaukee weather. Look at that there, because the Hoosiers. First throw four, right in the middle there. Right next to uh, one of the Van Arsdales, the two brothers, 30 and 25. Yeah. Other folks are here. Oh, speaking of the Van Arsdales, our cameras do not miss a thing. Yeah, Suggs, Legends. Former Indiana Hoosier teammates. Fantastic. I love it. Hey, this is the hottest ticket in town. No wonder all these sons, former sons, coming down here and checking out Dan Marley and the Lopes in action tonight. Boy, how the Lopes are putting on a show tonight. Tom Chambers, Archie Bradley coming out the door. Anywhere. Of course, the godfather himself, Jerry Colangelo's in the house. He wouldn't miss this one. Banner flies high at the University of Illinois. Then the Raptors. Oh, Jerry Colangelo. He's got to be so proud of the legacy he's built with Phoenix Sports. I, I call him the godfather. He's the godfather of Phoenix Sports. Hey, you got to be, right? Yep. Brought the Suns to the Valley. Brought the Diamondbacks to the Valley. Don't bring to the Valley. This uh, atmosphere here on GCU, along with Coach, uh, excuse me, Brian Mueller, former Coach Mueller, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he's doing it all. Look at that. Is that the, is that the uh, Hall of Fame ring for Jerry Colangelo? I don't know. It could be an Olympic ring. Hall of Fame ring, I would think, yeah. Beyond the arc in that second half, my goodness, just one of ten of the Lopes. They're down by five. Fifi backing in. Ooh. Pushed out by Harris. In the ball game for the A's, number 35, Mario Jones tried to get back into the game. He's definitely limping after that cramp. McCants checks back in. Jans takes Jamario out. Yeah, he's having a tough time bending his knees. Yeah. He's walking very straight legged. Josh with just two points here in the second half, looking to contribute. Jackson. Hands it off to Fifi Adu. Two on the shot clock. Got to get it off. Jackson does it. The buzzer. Just not able to consistently to get the long ball to fall in the second half. Give the Aggies credit. They are smothering the inside, making the Lopes try to bang away from the, uh, the exterior. Jared Martin gets up off the bench, makes his way over to the scorer's table. Four and a half approaching. Loose ball on the floor. Possession arrow Lopes. That's what I love to see. When that ball's loose on the floor. Don't start reaching with it with your arms. Go ahead and get your body down on the floor after it. That's Jared Martin's back in this thing. Casey Benson coming back in here. Whatever was bothering him, they worked it out on the sidelines. And Will I look for Jared Martin to do something spectacular like he did in that first half, creating some sort of a turnover or an extra pass to get one of his teammates off here in the final five minutes? That's into Braun. Braun loses the handle. Oh. Well, might have got a hand on it. Unlucky there. Looks like it just slipped right out of Braun's hand when he was going up with that quick pump fake. Lofton over to Endear. Endear back out front. McCants to his right, near side, Harris. Martin came over, got a bit of a hand on it. Back over, Chua, Chua to his left. And Deer. Chua. 
turns, looks for three. Off the rim, rebound, Aggies. Oh, no. Good grief. Played great defense for 30 seconds and couldn't get the board. 43-28 out, rebounding on the Aggies over the loose. Lofton, down low, baseline, kicks back out, Chua. Driving into the paint, bounce pass, off of a leg, it'll go all the way down the court. Along to the Aggies with six on the shot clock. Yeah, they're going to have to hustle. They got to go. Well, timeout. 322 on the clock. Timeout on the floor. The Lopes trying to battle back. They trail by five. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. In the pool. On the court. We wear our game faces under the lights. But sometimes our toughest opponents aren't wearing a uniform. Instead, we confront them internally. Mental illness affects one in four adults in the United States. And suicide is the second leading cause of death among college students. If you or someone you know is fighting a silent battle, please speak up and ask for help. You are not alone. alone. section there. Archie Bradley partaking in the t-shirt toss. Both teams a bit cold here in the second half shooting. 29% for the Aggies, 31 for the Lopes. Both in a bit of a drought. It's been over three minutes for the Lopes, over two for the Aggies. They get it in off the glass. That can't happen. You got six Lopes. seconds to shoot. You can't let a guy dribble from 90 feet all the way to your back with your bucket. Pretty much tells the story here. Remember that one. Yep. Speed. They're not going to go away quietly. They've been atop this conference year in and year out. How many times have the Lopes gotten good looks at the basket only to see the ball slip off the rim here in the second half? Locked into his lap. Inside, Chua muscles his way and puts it in. Back to back buckets right there at the front of the rim. Down nine here with 2.30 to play. Got to get a good look. Ron wants three, got a hand on it. <laughs> 18 points this half for GCU. Vernon's going to make his way to the scorer's table and gut it out. Harris drives. Not there, McCants. Boy, that's another story right there. Yeah. Just out muscling and out working. And yeah, Jared Martin's at a disadvantage with height, but McCants more or less caught that ball flat footed and just out muscled the ball right out of Martin's hands. Labor doesn't go. 
Down 11 right now, and they're floundering around. I don't know, with a minute and 30 to play, down 11, you got to either put some pressure on or start playing the foul game here. You run out of the clock. Boy, the out-rebound, their opponents coming in 7.7 .7 rebounds, but the Aggies have definitely moved that number up. Harris. Swarm of white for McCants. He's still got another opportunity. Got to hustle. Got to look for three here. Placing so much time on defense, you got to get up a three. Off the mark, and this game is all but decided. The Aggies are going to come in here and knock off the lows. It just slipped away from them in the final three and a half minutes of this basketball game. They couldn't get a stop when they were down by five. They, with six seconds on the clock, they let back-to-back -back buckets happen right at their front of the rim and then got good looks on the other end, just couldn't catch a, a, a friendly iron and had the ball slip out. Unfortunate, but you got to like the way the Bobs have battled in this basketball game for 37 minutes. Just too much rebounding out of the Aggies tonight. They made up for their lack of taking care of the basketball and their turnovers. Uh, like you said, they did the job defensively. Just 18 points in the second half for the Lopes. Well, here's the bar for the Lopes. This is this is the type of grit, determination, speed. I mean, this is where you got to try to achieve to. And they've, again, the Aggies are not going to go away quietly. No, they're fast. This kid, Lofton, is everything that he has been built to be when he came over as the player of the year in the Southwest Athletic Conference. He got 29 points on 15 shots. Longstreet doesn't go. This team knocked off Miami. That was a nice, smart play by Josh Braun, getting the defender up in the air and getting a foul. I wonder if they're going to give him three or if they say he stepped over the line for two. Either way, it will be too little, too late. I'm going to take a quick look at the scores to table, table to see exactly where he was at. Here's our look. Just one more time in the corner here, shows the ball, gets the player up, and yes, clearly both feet were behind the line as he moved into the defender who was trying to close out on the shot. It'll be three free throws for Josh Braun. We talked about 11 points in the first half, just two here in the second. Just couldn't keep the offense going. Well, he didn't have to go for 20 tonight. No. Now, I don't know if he had to go for 29 like Lofton had, but they certainly needed, they certainly needed 20 points. Freya with five, Dancer with nine, Labor with nine. I'm sure the Lopes would be disappointed that they didn't protect their home floor, but it's still early in whack play. They don't need a little help, but they don't need to go down and steal one. Uh, at, at, on the Aggies home court. But the most important thing is to put themselves in a good position to be playing good basketball when the WAC Conference Tournament comes. Because if you want to go to the big dance, you're going to have to win that WAC Tournament. Broad tonight, 15 points, four of nine from the field. Now, he got a couple looks early in that first half, really got himself going, and he had 11 points. It was looking good. But he just had nine shots on the game tonight. You're playing your rival, and you're going to be the you know, preseason player of the year. You got to get more than nine shots. You know, like Lofton, 15, 15 shots. Yeah. You know, Harris got 10 up. You, you got to be in double figures and shot attempts. And, you know, if you're going to play against... Utah Valley University and some of these other top black teams, you got to get more offense about what from, from your top play. New record crowd, 7,521 here at GCO Arena. It sure sounded like it. Inside, Vernon. Just doesn't go. Yeah, well, they're just kind of snake bit down that offensive end. Well, not if it was Vernon or Labors. Uh, I remember Frere going down, flying in for a bucket that he he couldn't get to finish. 
just wasn't their night here in the second half. And you, you kind of thought the way they came out in, that, in the early part of this second half and grabbed that three-point lead that it might have been that momentum that they took to the locker room that was going to sustain them the rest of this ball game. But the Aggies said, no way, not tonight, not up in here, and put the clamps on them defensively. Hey, they had 37 points at the half. They got 57 now. I'm not math wins, but 20 points and a half is never going to win you any basketball game. Also look to rebound on Saturday against UTRGB here at the arena. Put back in by Vernon. Vernon with a double double, 12 points, 12 rebounds, and that'll do it. 70 to 59, the Aggies over the Lopes. Zach Lofton with 29 points. Perfect 10 for 10 from the free throw line in 37 minutes for the Yankees. AJ Harris chipped in 11 in 29 minutes. And Jamario Jones was a one man wrecking crew on the glass tonight. He had 15 rebounds, even though he was cramping up at times. We'll be back here at GCU Arena with our post-game press conference with the head coach Dan Marley. We'll have our player of the game and our final stats. Lopes fall 70-59 to the Aggies here at GCU Arena. We'll be right back. innovation forward in a global marketplace, the Colangelo College of Business educates and develops values-driven business leaders. Our graduates exemplify the principles of servant leadership and entrepreneurship. GCU's strong Christian identity informs the education you receive, integrating our Christian values with the business curriculum. The college features more than 25 programs from the bachelor through the master's level, catering to traditional, evening, and online students. These programs serve a diverse set of aspiring business professionals who not only learn in the classroom, but gain real-world experience operating actual businesses. Our students also receive unique access to Jerry Colangelo's legendary experience, leadership, and connections throughout the business world. Find out more at gcu.edu slash business. I am Laura Lozoya and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together. The sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University. The quality of a private Christian education. The affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Take a look at our final stats. Everybody. The Aggies win their 14th game of the season, 70 to 59 over the Lopes. 46.4 from the field, 34-4 for the Lopes. 5 of 15, 5 of 24. Both teams not overly successful from the arc, but man, look at that rebounding margin. Double, 15 to 25. Mm. They committed 18 turnovers. That's not a number that a lot of teams would be really happy with, but. Certainly worked in their favor. Eight steals for the Lopes, just three for the Aggies. The uh, glass was definitely owned by New Mexico State. It was something that Coach Marley, even in the pregame uh, conversation we had with him, talked about rebounding. And uh, this is a quality team that knows how to play. Yeah, they really, the they really do get after it on the glass. They are so fast to the ball, uh, it's it's mind blowing. I don't think the Lopes were ready for that speed, having not faced it at all this year. I don't know any of the you know power five conferences that they the teams that they played that they've been able to uh, you know get, gauge themselves on on how quick these Aggie players were to the basketball. And the other thing too about some of those turnover stats that were a little misleading. The Aggies had 17 of those 18 turnovers early in the basketball game. The final eight minutes, they took care of the basketball, didn't turn it over at all, and that's when they, they uh, you know, moved their margin um, ahead, and the, the Lopes just could not keep up because that was the only thing keeping them in the basketball game early on. And then they tried to come back, hit from the arc. They were 1 of 14 from the 
from the arc in the second half. Well, they did a good job choking off the middle, and they would not let Lopes get inside, and they had to fire away from the outside because they couldn't get anything with the penetration off the dribble or the pass, and we've seen this Lopes team struggle at times from behind the arc. Didn't find a way to get to the free throw line like they did early in the first half as well. Okay, Longworth is inside the uh, post-game press conference area. And, Kate, apparently you have a question for Scott. Well, Scott, I was just listening to your comments about New Mexico State really taking care of the ball down the stretch of this game. And I wonder, with closing out a game, does that just come with experience? Obviously, uh, some veterans on this Lopes team. But this is their big year. Now they are contenders in Division One basketball. So from a player standpoint, how do you just know when, you know, to step it up to that next level? Well, there's definitely some growing pains in the process of trying to get to where the uh, New Mexico State Aggies have been. And they got some leadership on this Lopes basketball team with Josh Braun and Casey Benson. And those are fifth-year players that understand how to play and perform in big games that they've done it before, obviously. Benson and the uh, NC2A level in the Final Four. And, of course, um, Josh Braun, who's been the star player for the Lopes the last couple seasons, they can handle the big moments. Unfortunately, you've got to give the credit to the Aggies tonight. They have also know how to play down the stretch of basketball games and understanding how valuable each possession is. They took care of the ball, and they got baskets at the rim that they weren't successful in the second part of that first half getting. They got those shots down the stretch, the layups with six seconds. They go yeah. the length of the court. The next trip down, they get another slicing basket to the front of the rim. When in a close game like that, just a couple buckets can make a big difference in the psyche. And also now the Lopes are down nine points and thinking, well, we got to get back into this thing in a hurry, start banging away from the outside, shooting the three ball, which they weren't previously hitting. They made the hole tougher for themselves. Yeah, that, that six seconds left on the shot clock and they bring it all the way down the court. That, that was just a backbreaker there for, for GCU. Kate and Paul, joined by Paul Coro now in the post-game press conference area. Guys? Well, thank you, guys. And uh, pre-game, Paul, you and I were talking, and you said being on the road with this Lopes team, what you saw is maturation from that first road game to that final road game at Seattle University, how they really came out firing on all cylinders and knew how to play strong offense, defense for full for the both halves, rather. So tonight, what did you see happen with this team when the offense kind of just stalled at the end of the game? Well, I feel like the resiliency was there in the first half with the way they closed and tied up the game, and then, then they come out the second half, take a lead, have a control early. But really, the direct opposite happened of what happened in Seattle. They, they had shut down Seattle down the stretch, didn't allow them any buckets, a complete flip where the offense couldn't get anything. I felt there was times, not necessarily down the stretch, but even earlier, they settled for the three a lot. I think they missed 10 shots in a row at one point. Most of them were three, except for a couple yeah. shack drives. And then the boards just hurt them all night. And that we had talked about that before the game, that that would be a key. Mexico State's a great rebounding team against everybody, but they don't go plus 25 on, on anyone. So just too many extra chances uh, because they really had done a good job defensively to create turnovers, got a lot of right. points off that, but just gave them too many extra chances. Um, and, and then they shot well enough to capitalize on it. Right. When you look at New Mexico State turning the ball over 18 times, but then coming out with a victory, that's definitely an uh, area I bet Dan will focus on this week. And then when you just take in the whole atmosphere tonight at the game, a lot of famous people in the house, the Havocs were ready to go. What was the atmosphere like, from in your opinion, when you just think that these WAC games, they truly count now for the Lopes? Yeah, we know from being here that a lot of these games feel like this. And of course, it was a little bit more hype tonight. Havocs hadn't been around for a month. New Mexico State was here. But uh, this place does a great job of creating this atmosphere on a nightly basis. It's difficult for everybody to come in here. I think uh, these Aggies had lost these last two visits here. They weren't sleeping on what it was going to be like here. Um, GCU was the preseason favorite. So even though New Mexico State had probably established themselves as the favorite again, in non-conference right. play, I still think that chip was on their shoulder tonight from the preseason, and GCU being a, ascended to the top. So when you say that, now, you know, GCU going to have something in their back pocket when uh, March rolls around in that tournament. Are they going to want to go out there seeking a little revenge? Has this rivalry been established? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a rivalry from the way the last two years have gone. It's been a home-and-home trade-off. And, and now the Lopes need to do some road, road damage. They did it in Seattle. It's going to be uh, a, a time for them to go to Las Cruces and, and end the street, losing streak there. G uh, games like that can swing it back. There's still plenty of time uh, left in the whack. New Mexico State's going to have a lot of tough games against other teams, too. And so, you know, some, they, the Lopes can get some help elsewhere if they take care of business here again. 
a day to regroup for this team before taking the court uh, Saturday against UTRGV. You've been at practices. You've been on the road with this team. What do you think Dan Marley will attack with this team tomorrow? Well, I think a lot of it's going to be, uh, you know, I'm sure he, he emphasized rebounds all week, but they, you know, nothing upsets him more than getting out toughed by another team. And, and tonight, New Mexico State was tougher on the boards, and no, no doubt about that. Um, you know, I think offensively, we've heard from him in the past, and he'll probably say it again tonight, that he was probably happy with a lot of the shots. You know, they didn't, that one thing that they carried over from the Seattle game was the lack of turnovers. They had only made one turnover right. in that second half against Seattle tonight, took great care of the ball again, got a lot of decent shots. Missed a lot of stuff around around the rim. Missed some open threes. So again, I think it's he's just waiting for the offense to execute. We saw a little bit of uptick from Josh Brown tonight. First half, he really got it going. In fact, he probably kept him in the game in the early right. going when nothing else was going. We were kind of talking about that. New Mexico State, uh, you, you tip your cap to them and the way they were able to you know, button down and really take control down the stretch. But you see the leadership from a guy like Josh Braun. Scott was commenting on that. Does this team have the pedigree, in your opinion? Are they showing it? They have in other games. Are they showing it that they can, although it's their first year of being eligible for tournament action, can a Josh Braun, can a Casey Benson, can a Keontae, can they carry this team when it counts? Yeah, I don't think they think anything about it being the first year of right. eligibility. I don't think they consider themselves like a rookie team on the scene. I, I feel like they they feel what they've done over the four-year transition period show that they belong uh, with these other teams. You know, I think tonight, too, we need to be mindful that Casey Benson's playing hurt. Right. Uh, he's had a real tough go of it lately from uh, the time he hurt his knee against Illinois uh, to hurting the shoulder uh, last game in Seattle. Then tonight he pulls up with a cramp in the middle of the second half too. Um, he's gotten it out there. You know that guy's. He, I think he's looking at his career now and seeing the the clock winding down, the calendar's ticking down, and he doesn't want to miss any games. He, I think I think he's only missed one practice in three okay. years at Oregon. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's bam, bam, bam right now. Right, definitely a gamer trying to play through some of those injuries. And I think you're absolutely right. Although this is the first team, first time the Lopes are eligible for that postseason action with Dan Marley at the helm, this team has been training for this since they've stepped on the court day one. Yeah, I, and we knew there was going to be bumps in the road. And this team, like Dan Marley always says, the, the WAC championship goes through New Mexico State. Tonight proved that again. They're, they're the team to beat. Um, and I think they had shown that before tonight. I think you know their, their non-conference resume was superior at this point because they beat a number five Miami team, because they beat Illinois, a team that GCU also played very well. Um, but uh, they got them on a neutral court. So, you know, they had those marquee wins. GCU's on the cusp of those wins. We know that they almost had Boise right. State. They almost had Illinois. And and really, you look at, at the six losses right now, there's not a bad loss on GCU's resume. Every, all those teams are doing well. You, know, you go back to University of San Diego. They've turned out to be one of the best uh, teams in that West Coast Conference. So um, nothing really to feel terrible about with the losses and uh, just need to... Uh, you know, take care of business at home uh, like they expect. They don't ever want to lose here. And uh, the rebounding's got to turn around, need to, need a bigger effort from the, the guys up front. Right, and you, I'm guessing that's part of the message right now. But it's interesting right now because uh, Dan Marley normally pretty quick to the podium. <laughs> this game taking a little bit longer, so you kind of wonder what's going on inside the locker room. If it's a rah-rah and trying to regroup this team, get them back together so they can hold their head high. Because you said there were some good points, although we also know his intensity. So there's one person who knows what it's like when you're inside a locker room after a game like this, and that would be Scott Williams. So, Scott, you know, you can take us back to some of those – tight games that you were in there and so much adrenaline going some famous people in the stands just what was it like from a player's perspective tonight do you think going out on the court for this game well i know the players were hyped then there's no doubt about it this place was lit when they first came onto the court and i think it took them a while to calm that you know energy you get all this adrenaline pump they didn't handle it real well the first Half of the first half. Right. <laughs> and then they got themselves under control and they fed off of that energy once the Keontae Vernon got a dunk on a follow jam. That got them off and running. They took that momentum to the locker room. These are the kind of games, though, that you never forget. Right. No matter how, you know, what the final score was, all you're going to remember is did you win it or did, or did you lose it? I couldn't tell you how many points or rebounds I had in the rivalry games. I remember what my record was when we went to Duke and how many times we won there. When you beat your rival, it's a special moment. So they're, they're going to be upset that they didn't get this win. Uh, but like 
Paul was saying, there's so much more basketball to be played. When these seniors win, they play their last basketball game here on this GCU floor. That's the one that they want to win, and they take going into the WAC tournament with them. Let's uh, move on to our player of the game. And for the Lopes, that has to be Keontae Byrne. He got banged up there in the second half, but finished with it. his 13th career double-double, 12 points and 12 rebounds. Yeah, he really was a warrior. He was down there, the one player that was down there banging underneath, taking that ball hard to the rack. I love the fact that, you know, he, he did those, uh, the 12 boards. He got six of those on the offensive side of the ball. And this is the one where he... Hurt that right shoulder. He went to the bench for a short period of time and came back out there and continued to beat, compete, grabbed a number of more offensive, defensive rebounds. And he was that one guy that was out there banging with some of those other guys like Jamario Jones and Wilkins and, uh, and Chua underneath for the Aggies. So he was definitely earned the player of the game tonight. Senior did his thing. Second double-double of the season for Keontae Vernon, 12 and 12 on the night. Let's now revisit your three keys. Yeah, it was the, it, you know, border battle as in rebounding, uh, getting on the boards. Well, that didn't work out so good for the oh, Lopes tonight. We've, we've been, everyone's last been stand. talking about that. Let's move on to the next one. Passing the rock, the assist. GCU had 10 assists in the first half, just three assists in the second half. The ball movement stopped. They couldn't get any cuts to the basket and uh, the, the punch bowl. They got banged early in the paint. 34-24 disadvantage points in the paint. And this is a, you gotta give the Aggies a lot of credit. The Lopes are 20 and 0 the last couple seasons coming back off of a road game. And the Aggies took the fight right to the Lopes tonight. And they were definitely the, the team that punched uh, first early and often. Well, since the 2014-15 season, the Lopes were 20 and 0 when returning to GCU Arena following a road or neutral site game. That record now 20 and 1. More whack action comes your way this Saturday when high scoring guard Nick Dixon and the UTRGV Vaqueros ride into GCU Arena to take on the Lopes. GCU leading the conference in most defensive stats, but will have their hands full with Dixon, the leading scorer in the conference. Tune into the Lopes pregame show starting at 6.30 with Kate this Saturday night on your viewer online at GCU.tv. That'll do it from here at GCU Arena where tonight the Lopes fall to the Aggies 70-59. to Please join us again Saturday night, GCU hosting UTRGV. But until then, for Kate Longwood, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful evening.